What are you, 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 what are well, um, I'm, I've been flying in and out um, over the oh, course okay. of um, pretty much since like late December. Okay. Um, I've been living in Boulder, Colorado. Yep. Um, kind of been training out of uh, CrossFit Sanitas mm -hmm. is where I was at. And then um, I'm making the full-time move over here May 1st. So right now it's just trying to get the family going um, and figuring out a way to um, kind of get that up and running a little faster. So it's, Okay, yeah. gotcha. So you're in transition right now. Yeah, a little bit. And you're getting married this year, right? Yep. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Now, is so is your fiancé, and you have a son as well, right? So, yep. Okay. Yeah. Are they here, or are they still in no, Colorado? They're still in Colorado, okay. so that's why it's like I've been doing a little halftime. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, flying on the weekends and then go back home. Okay, so like you're you'll be here for three or four days, and then go back home, or what is this? Today look like? was a little bit quicker because um, I have also some family in town, so I'm just uh, flying out Saturday, so tonight. tonight. Oh, okay, yeah, to yeah. go back home. Yeah, and I okay. flew in Thursday. Thursday, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. Thursday. oh, wow, wow, that's a quick, yeah, yeah that is a quick turnaround. But it's yeah, for it the is. open, you know, um, supporting okay. athletes. So it's like kind of the most important time of year for us. Gotcha. Um, starting that competition season, making sure that we get the. Everything up and rolling. Yep. Okay. And Nick, how long have you been in town? So I'm in Knoxville. So I go back and forth. Oh, you're um, trans. Oh, wow. Yeah. So both of it was funny because both of us needed, they wanted, I think they wanted somebody very local when they hired and yeah. they didn't okay. do it. I mean, Knoxville is <laughs> close, right? Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so I go back and forth. I'm usually here for the open. Okay. Um, like, Thursday through Sunday, whatever we have to get done. Okay. Um, but like Dwight said, it's just because of the open right now. Like we'll have a couple of weeks where we can just work with them remotely. And then when the games come, we'll obviously be here all the time. So okay, gotcha. I just moved to Knoxville in August. Uh, my fiance got into PA school there. Oh, cool. So we're new to Tennessee. Okay. And we love it. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, Tennessee's great. Although I don't know Knoxville that well. I've been through there numerous times, but I'm sort of partial to Nashville. Um, I didn't realize you were also engaged. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. Yeah, do you have a date set yet? Uh, yeah, December 29th of this year. Okay, yeah, very so cool. Yeah. Coming up. Yeah. yeah, hopefully all the virus stuff will be over by then because your wedding's like in September. Like so we're kind of, we're, we're playing with a little fire there, seeing whether or not, because I mean, we had to, be fine. well, what sucked was trying to look for dates because everybody that wanted to get married this year Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, so they all got all the wedding for, venues, yeah. all the so. all the good photographers. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so like cake maker DJs are <laughs> all and, booked. And I'm I'm not really like a big planner, that. so try <laughs> trying to get things going with that. Julie, Julie was on me all the time about trying to make sure that we like locked everything in and she's like yeah. it's not going to be there. I was like well, it's you know what? We could probably plan this in three months. She's like, no, literally, there's not <laughs> a way to do it. Where like, are you right. getting married? Um, so it's called Hotel Luna Mystica. Um, and it's in New Mexico, and it's like oh, nice. an Airstream hotel type thing where all of our friends are renting out all the Airstreams, and it's like all around this like big circle that's in the center of it. No way. Yeah, and we're trying to make a weekend of it where we go river rafting, oh, um, dude, rock climbing, fun. and kind of do like big hikes. Oh, wow. Uh, which will be kind of cool. So, Are you going to do the rock climbing and the stuff? Yeah. Like that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. That's cool. That's so you may cool. or may not have a sprained ankle walking yeah. down the aisle. Exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> do it all afterwards. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I did not know you guys were traveling in and out of town this much. So are you planning to move to Nashville as well at some point? Not, You're going to go do what you need to do from Knoxville. Yeah, yeah. I'll be okay. from Knoxville. Like, like I said, we just moved to Knoxville. So like okay. my fiance, two and a half years for school, for PA school. Okay. So we'll be there at least for that time we have gotcha. no idea what will happen after that yeah oh, i love nashville nashville yeah great. it's great so i mean you're three hours three and a half hour drive no, 215 yeah. yeah oh really yeah, it's not oh, bad okay. at all so you're on this side of knoxville yeah you go down it's 40 right that yeah. runs yeah. that it's easy like right off the highway it's gotcha perfect all right so you guys are in and out now so the open this is the third week of the open and you've been here like thursday through saturday it sounds like or kind of coming in when they announce the open for the open workouts because they the athletes have to do well enough at the open to kind of progress mm -hmm. uh yep. but obviously you're not really caring if they win or not you're training through it and all that um what is so then when will you guys be here and just be here to train leading up to the games then is there going to be a season where it's just all hands on deck you guys are in town everyone's here and you're training for the yeah you the look games. at probably eight weeks out and the games are the very end of july this year so i would say at least because he'll be here well, he'll that's, be moving yeah. so i would say i'll 
it'll be like the end of June. Like we'll be, every session needs to be like very well thought out recovery. Everything needs to go on. And like, we're in a team environment right now with all of our athletes, but that's when things will kind of break off. Right. Cause like at that point they're competitors. Cause right now they're teammates. Yes. Cause like the open doesn't matter. They're not really competing against each other. Yep. But when that starts coming, that's when it gets intense because okay. that's like the full day of training. Like you can barely get off the couch, but like that's the volume you need to put in yep. to be able to, handle anything once the games come got it yeah. okay pull that mic just a little closer if you would you can yeah just pull it towards you all right can you explain how that team dynamic then works because you guys are all here with team proven yep. prvn nice shirt um what how so can you talk a little bit more about how that works they're training together and you kind of have this community camaraderie you know best practices that type of thing that you can like benefit from but mm -hmm. these are all 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 five of them are individual athletes yes, correct they're all five right. going to be going to the games on their own so how does this how does this kind of team thing work it's kind of revolutionary yeah. in the sport because no one's ever really done this and it's kind of popped up to where like there's three or four camps around the country doing this now this year or yeah well within the last year i would say okay. i think like post post covid is when it started really happening because okay. people are realizing that just because you're not on a team, like you need a team around you. And mm -hmm. yeah, you're going to be competing against some of these people down the road, but like you can't do this alone every day. Yeah. People are burning out so fast. Like they get to be 30 years old, which for a lot of professional sports isn't that old, but they've been just hammering it every year for 10 years and they mm -hmm. just burn out. Right. So like if we can prolong these athletes ability to have fun, to stay healthy and just enjoy what they're doing, until that July period to where like yep. they have to really kick it in individually. Like that's what makes them grow. And okay. I think we've both seen and Shane who brought us in, um, he's seen the benefits of that across the board. Even if you're a, a man, a woman, if you're competitive or not, like you need that support team around you, like any professional athlete has with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they are literally, this is, they're, they're not going as a team like they're literally just happen to be here training together do they each have their own coach at this point yeah we've kind of split off um and then handled the different athletes so um you know right now um nick is um with uh brooke and will um, okay handling all, a lot of theirs a little bit more um and then i'm over um working more closely with alex street um and then james newberry who's still remote mm -hmm. um but i'm more handling that and then talking a little more with shane because shane knows james a lot more from the past they've mm. been working together so um shane has a little bit more oversight over that where we kind of work together a little bit more as i develop a relationship with james i see when does james come over um we don't really know um, yeah i think he's gonna he's in australia yeah, yeah i knew that so, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah so with i think if covid times weren't happening he would probably try to make some trips but okay. like with australia i don't do you know much about their quarantine i've heard process? it's pretty crazy yeah, yeah. so yeah. shane and tia are dealing with that right now yeah. and like if you go over there you have to pay just to be in a hotel quarantine for two weeks it's like five grand a person that's what I didn't understand was why are they charging for the quarantine? So they or have just to cost the hotel or it's the cost of hotel. The, like they, they can't leave the room. They so like eat that food, all too, the right? food, like yeah. every amenity, they have like, to eat the hotel food. Yeah. yeah. Cause they did this in South Korea no and way. it was the same thing. And Tia would put up these like, stories of her food and it was the saddest like, it was, it was just like, like little like mango pouches everything no. everything was cold yeah. like that every meal they had came out of a ref refrigerator it looked like little like yeah. me lunch meals that you used to get as a kid like and that's what days. 14 Gosh. days in a row just tea and chain in a room with a rower and a couple dumbbells like you I know think, what? thank god they had video games i think yeah <laughs> but you know what is so striking to me about that is that is like the best example of how so much one side fits all this whole thing was from the beginning mm -hmm. i mean this is yeah. this is the fittest woman on the planet earth <laughs> not in australia not in america the planet earth the fittest woman yeah she's training for like the the super bowl of crossfit yeah but yeah if you come over here you got to be in a hotel and eat our food like that's just what you got to do well, and you can't leave that's that's the funny thing was she was there to be an olympian which is even like okay if you don't know about crossfit that's fine exactly. like, but she was an olympic athlete like she may not have been on the team yet but like you're there with australia as a country like you would right. think they would hook you up like dude that's crazier no that's even crazier yet <laughs> you're, wow and even if you want to quarantine at your house when you go to australia you can like um you can lobby for that i think and then what's funny about it i think it was a two hundred thousand dollar 
No joke. Feet. Well, this is what I heard on <laughs> to, her to, to try, to try Yeah, to try to do it because they were trying to develop like a, basically a home gym, quarantine in their house, not come out of it. <laughs> and even just to do that was 200 grand. So it's, you know, well, that's what I would understand. Why are they charging 200 grand that, to go home for two I don't, weeks? Uh, no, I, I literally think it's basically like, hey, if you have a crap ton of money, sure, we'll let you do it. Other than that... You have to do this. I think they're just trying to get money from yeah. people. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's almost like a it's almost like a license. Like to go quarantine at home, you gotta pay two hundred K for yeah. this ability to go. They're not giving you two hundred thousand dollars worth of services at your home. No. I don't think so. No, it's literally Ooh. just to do And it. I think like in my own head, I would assume it's just because they have to make sure you stay in your home. Like there's probably some people that need to watch over you. Like yeah. it's not yeah. worth two hundred thousand no, dollars. It's definitely not worth two hundred thousand. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's so crazy. So like with James, like, yeah, he could come over here easily. But the problem is like going back when he needs to train, he can't be like spending okay. that kind of money or wasting that kind of time to try to get back for two weeks. Cause yes. Yeah. Okay. But at some point before the games, uh, for sure, at least a few weeks, right? He's going to come over yes. here, get settled in, do whatever he's got to do, finish his training. Go yeah, to I the think, games. I think what we would like to see yeah. is him just like spend a month or two before okay. they, like like that time over. period yeah. that you were talking about about like in June would be kind of like yeah. an ideal time okay. period that if you could sense. stay all the way up through it would be ideal because yep. even if COVID protocols are still in place after the games like who cares like yeah. your training's over you're in the off season now like if you have to quarantine for two weeks you have to quarantine exactly for two weeks. yes okay leading up then to the games you said there's a part there's a, a transition where these athletes are going to mm-hmm. separate and go out on their own. Is that because they need to just lock in mentally and focus and not worry about anyone else? Is that what, why, why would they separate leading up to the games? Because like, like I said, like right now, like it's fun. It's like, we have a good team atmosphere, but then they become competitors, right? So like, you don't want to know what that person's doing. right? So that's legit part of the reason they're going to separate. Yeah. And just from a mental aspect, like if there's an athlete that's better than you in your own camp, you don't want to just be getting beat every day, going to a competition, right? Sure. You just getting your head beat against (laughs) the wall. Like I would never, if I was an athlete, like. Tia is insane in the gym. Like she, I've never seen her really lose much. And if you're a month out from a competition, you don't. Okay, I'm gonna go to the gym and just yeah. get beat again. Okay. So like when we have our athletes, like they may be a guy girl together. Like with Will and Brooke, they may like we we'll probably stay together mm-hmm. there. But um, we don't want the girls or the guys going against each other every mm-hmm. day just because mentally it's it's not great. Yeah, and there will be probably some pieces that we do come together. Mm-hmm. You know, and like yeah. um, you know, we talked to Shane about that. That there's you know some lakes and areas out here where we're going to be doing some swim training and going into other pieces and then having them like have those, those random times where they do compete against each other. But okay. for the most part, they, you know, at that point leading up to the games, it's, we need to, you know, fine tune every point of their performance. Mm-hmm. And realistically, they do have a lot of differences. They have different holes. Um, so they have different needs as they get to it. Um, as we're building up the foundation right now, it's about developing that like feel that we're all caring for each other. Um, and a team environment Mm -hmm. to really believe in them and then kind of building that base together and then really fine tuning as we get closer. I see. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. I think that's what we're going to be doing different too. And I'm interested to see with these camps that are popping up that they really only have one head coach that I've noticed Mm -hmm. and they're kind of just following a group model. So like, I don't know all the ins and out of it, but I think us as a culture at Proven, we're going to be able to do things a little bit different because Shane has set that up into a way where we're a little bit quality over quantity to where he's like, okay, these are my five athletes. We're not growing anymore. We have two coaches. Oh, really? Yeah, at least for this year. Like, Mm -hmm. we could expand in the future, but, like, he wants to make sure he has quality control on everything. So when we do have to break away, like, everyone's got their own coach. We're good to go. We have a plan, and then you guys can execute when the games come. Okay. And did you mention you're going to break apart about two months before the games? So Around May sometime? Yeah. Probably. Probably. Yeah, I mean, we Dude, already it's do. coming quick. We already do some yeah. stuff, like, during the week. Like, I'll program for my athletes. He'll program for his. And okay. then they'll come together to do some workouts during the day. But then it'll just be on a, a grander scale, I guess, to where they'll do more alone. Yes. The games okay. Come. That makes sense. So right now you're just laying this foundation and it's, it's still not completely one size fits all, but it's a little bit more like you're building Mm -hmm. the base and they can kind of do that together. And I saw Brooke mentioning that, you know, she's, 
still now, like when she's doing a workout, she'll, she's focusing on what she needs to do, but also now there's someone here to race and like that doesn't go completely out of your mind. So that, like, that's what you want to just, you don't want to have that be too much in their head when they're really yeah. training for the game. It's like leading up yeah, to that. It was like last night, you know, is a good example. Yeah. You know, was, a training session yeah. where it's like, you know, Tia actually knew that Brooke was a little bit stronger of a rower on that type of a workout and was kind of like, you know, but I don't want to let her win. So it turned more into a competing type scenario, which is oh, like, yeah. okay, you know, yeah. most of the time, but what we really want to do is have a training environment yeah. um, where they're really trying to work on exactly what they need and kind of locked into their zone. Yep. And so not getting pulled into that too often and and really trying to tailor tailoring yep. that to happen only at specific times. It makes I, sense. Yeah, I think being very cognizant of when you do that, and Shane is, and he yeah. like preaches that over and over of when you're competing during the week I would say maybe two to three times maybe and it's usually like an aerobic capacity thing to where like you're only going to get fitter the harder you go it's going to hurt a lot but you're going to get fitter like that yeah. like you're using machines rowers ski or running um, it's never going to be like a heavy barbell or a gymnastics piece because that's when form breaks down your technique goes out the window if you're competing against someone Got to it. where we want to rein that back in a little bit um, with the heavy barbells and the gymnastics that makes sense and when you guys break apart are you going to different gyms or just going into the gym at different times I assume you're going to have to use different gyms T yeah Tia uh, trains predominantly out of East Nashville mm -hmm. um, you, the, you are you from that gym? No, I post I, about. I, I'm from CrossFit Forte, which okay. is just right up the road. Okay. A couple years ago, we tried to move into East Nashville, and I checked out the gym and would have gone there, but no, I'm not a member it's there. It's massive. It's huge. Yeah, yeah it's, huge. it's really big. Caleb, it, he's a really good guy, and is like he? We, we've only known him for a couple of weeks, but he's been the most welcoming guy. Like, their community is really awesome. We've got to know some of their members. Cool. Like Tia Shane and I went and watched their open wad last week. And they were like, <laughs> it's a great story. Like, I don't, did you see a picture of Tia like cheering on one of their members? No, I didn't. So you got to check it out when oh, we're so done. I'd love to. But like, she just, we went in for their 530 class because like we wanted to show appreciation for them having us. Like we take okay. over the back of the gym like, and they're great about it. But Tia just jumped in and started judging people that were doing this open workout. Just randomly. Like these are just, just like, random like CrossFit imagine, members. Imagine oh, you're doing the open. Well, I'm just pushing him to imagine his limit too. No way. Open, yeah, and yeah. you just look up and the fittest woman in the world's telling you to pick it up like, <laughs> she's, like, she's like you better finish this workout <laughs> like if that happened to me i would like the fastest time i've ever done an open yeah, yeah. wad that's what would have happened oh for sure and this guy was there and he it was his first open official open workout ever like he'd never done it before and caleb oddly enough had programmed it two months ago in their gym like it was, okay. it was a repeat for the open and um the guy's like I didn't even get to the last set of burpees two months ago, and he finished it that day. Twenty-one point two. Same exact workout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow! <laughs> and it was his first open one. He's like, it was just because you were standing there yelling. At, at, at me. what point did uh, <laughs> Tia step in and start yelling at him? Early. Oh, early. Early. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Like All I right. think he was in his set of like twenty snatches. Oh wow. So, okay. Because so, man, if you man, because that would be a little bit intimidating. Because and I this think, man was hurting. Oh, I believe like, it. <laughs> I totally. We almost killed two guys because Ray. Was was scoring for two and she's in our gym and she yells when she's yeah, scoring yeah. and on the last burpees i joined her and we were just like just yelling two guys through and they finished but dude they almost died well and that workout's all just about pain tolerance yes so. oh yes yeah yeah, yeah he I, uh, he did not want to do what he was doing I but Tia, like as long as tia <laughs> stood there and watched him he was going to do it. i'm sure he's going to remember that workout oh, oh you can't forget oh, it for ever. sure yeah. you know, what a memory that's so cool and yeah. so i was curious too how you're doing that so you're just kind of taking over a side of the gym yeah at crossfit east nashville and then the and then the rest is like they're just having their classes at normal times yes yeah, so people are other, just coming and going the other and gym are, is trivium so yeah. Yep. Do you know Trivium yep. with Nate over there? Um, so that's where they all started, yep. and it was just Brooke and Will. Um, I, like, like that, they, they kind of just created this whole environment of being like, hey, come train with us, yeah. and then Alec came down. And then so Street Will came in, used yeah. to own a gym. And mm. then he moved in with Trivium, and he, Will's been around Nashville for like forever. Like yeah. he grew up oh. around here. Oh, okay. So I didn't he know was the OG around here. Okay. Then Brooke came out. And then Street and Alec followed, and then T and Shane, obviously. So we are either at East Nashville or Trivium, and then thankfully at East Nashville, like you know how big it is, that whole back rig back there with all the equipment, we just kind of just stay in our own spot see. that way. Okay. And at the yeah. same time, it's like we do try to plan out around the classes um, and talk of to Caleb as much as yeah. possible. Okay. 
um, because we totally understand um, also being pre previously in affiliates, um, you know, and I've run an affiliate that you kind of want to make sure that you're as good as you possibly can to the people yeah. that are it can uh, get providing bad. that spice. Yeah, because yeah, it's like, I mean, there's a lot of people in there. Like last night, um, there was 40 people in that gym. Yeah. Um, you know, 40. 40 people. In a in class? In one class. In yeah. one class. Yeah. yeah. Do they run one coach then at that point? No, or they, they, had, they, had they had multiple a bunch people down um, because, I mean, it was the open. So yeah. they had, you know, I mean, oh, Caleb, okay, Caleb was sure. running around. Yeah, I don't think that's know, typical. That's okay. It was just the yeah. open workout. Okay. But yeah. yeah, I mean, we've been around, when you're around competitive CrossFitters, they yeah. don't even need to be games athletes. Like, they can be really rude in gyms, like competitors. Yeah. You know what I mean? Really? Like, taking over equipment they shouldn't. Like, it, it, There's it, a little bit of a stigma sometimes but, that comes with that, But too. rude with their behavior? Yes. Like, well, they don't really? even know it because they're very in their own zone. So, oh, and, and sometimes okay. They're they, just locked they, in. They do know it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess, I guess. Okay. I, I've, had it, I've had it in uh, my gym, you know, at Sanitas, where it's like we have, like, kind of this back area and whatnot, but they're, like, you know, doing a clean and jerk cycle, and they're dropping weights while the coach is trying to... Um, you know, go through something. Okay. And all you hear is like pounding of yeah. weights oh, okay. um, and things going on. And you don't realize that you're actually like creating this environment where everybody just keeps looking at you. Yeah. Sure. And there are other times where like, as a yeah. coach that drove me nuts. <laughs> it's insane. I would be well, in the I middle of a sentence yeah. Yeah. and a guy's deadlifting like for five reps in the back. I'm like, I'm using metal plates. Like, <laughs> wait five <laughs> seconds. Like, and then yeah. you can go back to that. No, but I could totally see that. It it's happened. Distracting. I don't, yeah. Thankfully it doesn't happen at your gym. It sounds like, but yeah. like every gym I've been to, there's been guys that are, yeah. training to be 15th at their local comp on Saturday that are just like causing scenes in the back, taking up oh, equipment. Okay, like, gotcha. And then they just like yeah. walk through the class without even yeah, realizing like, that. Come on. Yeah. Just walk straight through. You're that's, not that that's important. Fun. And yeah. it, the, the crazier thing is it's usually people that don't pay for a membership. It's like coaches. They're yeah. like, they okay. think they own the place and there's somebody paying 200 bucks over here that like, Shut up and let them exactly. work out. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't know this was an issue. We've just not dealt with it at our gym. So yeah, I mean, that's great I think to hear. It's yeah. yeah, it's it's different culture stuff, and you have to set it from the get go. And I mean, that was what you know. That's one of those things that that's why like coming into it with Caleb is like trying to be as honest as possible about like okay, you know, and then yes. talking to Nate when we go in. Yeah. Um. Again, it's like knowing when the open gym times are. Um. And yeah. trying to just tailor the training. So a lot of times they'll come in and warm up in the back as the classes are going on. And then when it gets to open gym, they can kind of do more of their thing. Yep. So all of our athletes are very, um, you know, very responsible about yeah. that. Making there, sure mm -hmm. There's yeah. a lot of egos at yeah. the games level, like yeah. to where people think they deserve things. They don't. And I would say our team, <sighs> and great. it, it yeah. starts from the top, like T and Shane would never bring anyone like that in. Um, but this team is over the top, respectful, over the top. Like they're just great people all yeah. around, genuine. Well, that's, that's where I, th I think that's a, that's one of the things I really respect and appreciate about CrossFit is the culture of the people by and large. Like mm -hmm. that's why I'm a little yes. bit surprised to hear this. And if we and was just not the, dealt with the it at the gym, right? right like I'm sure it is. Like, I'm sure it's very rare. I also feel like this is, I really <laughs> love our gym. I think Evan Beach, the owner and head coach there is just kind of, he's a noble kind of like, he wouldn't like, they wouldn't stand for that, you yeah. know, but yeah. also but also he'd make space for it, I'm sure, if someone needed to train. But <clears throat> the culture of people in CrossFit, our gym, I've been part of two other gyms. It's just good people. Yeah. Like, you know, I was a little bit slightly nervous about this podcast. I mean, when you think about, like, the fittest woman on planet Earth, and Shane has coached her and the fittest man on, on the Earth. Yeah. And you guys are coaches with Shane, and I'm for getting to talk years. I'm getting yeah, to yeah. talk with you guys. It's <laughs> like, dude, I'm like one separation away no, from, yeah. the, I mean, this is... You know, it's a big deal. So I'm, I appreciate you guys be here, being here. And last night I was talking with my wife, Marianne, about it. And but I was like, Dude, these guys are, you know, they're sure they're they're coaches at pretty at a very high level, but they're also CrossFitters. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like CrossFitters in general, like there's just good. They're good people. Yeah, I think it stems from a lot of culture things, like you said, um, characteristics, just hard work. Like people, there, you throw a lot of ego out the door when you step into a CrossFit gym. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm sure you remember your first day. Like yep. you, you were probably not great. I know I wasn't. Oh like, my god, yeah, still it's, not it's, great. It's, <laughs> like you it's come one of those in, where you're just like left on the floor. Especially if you like, were yeah. an athlete before. Yeah. Like you come in thinking I can do this. Like I used to train all the time, and then you can't even put a bar over your head because yes. the mobility. Well, so I bad. mean that was that was me in a nutshell. I can I can overhead squat a PVC pipe when I first started. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, but I actually like I think that's the thing with CrossFitters is like people that naturally gravitate towards CrossFit actually kind of like the learning aspect of it, mm -hmm. yes. you know, um, and getting better at something every single day. And I mean, that's the one thing that I mean, I know um, 
us like that we're trying to do every single day and that we love seeing with our athletes is like they're really like locked in and wanting to learn every single day and it's the same thing that brought us all to crossfit in the first place yes. which is I th- getting yeah. better and i think that's yeah. one of the biggest things for me i'm proven yeah. so far is we've been able to see these athletes just give us everything yeah they have no reason to trust us especially us yeah. like yep. we've been here for four months like mm. who are we they mm-hmm. don't know us and they've been with some of the best in the world yeah but they understand like shane brought us here for a reason like try it out see if yeah. you get our respect like yeah. and they have just gone all in 100 yeah, percent. Really? like they've haven't pushed back at all like the rapport back and forth has been amazing with them and i couldn't be more thankful for the athletes to give us that mm-hmm. trust in them for their training moving forward and yeah. i think that's one of, that's what's going to give them the edge over everyone else this season yeah i think that thing about like at crossfit like there's always someone that's better than you in the gym and like getting your butt beat like mm-hmm. that humbling aspect i think that is a really good thing and i think it's there's some similarities to lincoln and jackson and jericho my three boys are in jiu-jitsu yeah. and yeah, yeah, totally. i've heard joe wrote obviously he's a big fan of um jiu-jitsu as a well just as a sport mixed martial arts because part of it is you're just always you you get your butt beat and that's just part of the growing aspect it keeps you humble and then you're getting better you're competing against yourself and others at the same Mm -hmm. time and i think there's some similarities there between like jujitsu and crossfit because i like that it's one of the things i really love about crossfit is the competing against yourself and others at the same time and you can like decide which one you're going to do more of that day Mm -hmm. it's just i well, to be honest, guy, I just really like the sport. I'm impressed by it. I've been part of it since 14 when we moved to Nashville. And it, I mean, look, a lot of these movements I can't even do, but there's something about the functional fitness aspect, the variety, the high intensity, the community. I just think they got it right, man. Yeah. It's yeah. a really good sport. And I think, I think it's going back into a growing phase again. You know, I think I think. It do you think? It. Yeah, I yeah. do. Um, I think people are coming back around on it. And I think that the way that the sport, too, um, is going – um, and they're putting a lot more into athletes. Um, I think think that's kind of like a big thing. And yeah. there's a lot of other brands that are coming on that are really kind of like recognizing that, which will mm. be good. All right. So can you guys explain Proven now? Is this is this T and Shane's company? Is yeah. it? It's so it's apparel and programming largely, right? And so are they like sponsoring to have these athletes here training? Like are they? Like, is there like a technical aspect or an official aspect to be like a proven team member? Or is it more they just happen to all be here training and it's the T and Shane are here and they're proven. So everyone's kind of just repping the brand. So yeah, it kind of it kind of just popped up. Yeah. To be honest. Like no one had this planned at all. Yeah. Like no. it was. Um, well, and that's why we wound up both being on. Because, um, I mean, originally it was actually only going to be one of us. Yeah. They were oh, looking okay. to just hire one coach. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden Will Street and she, Alec come to Nashville and they're like, oh, they're all training together anyways. Like, okay. let's make sure that they're good fits, but this could be a good opportunity. So, like, we were both in the same week for interviews, yeah. and they just ended up, like, hiring us both. I remember, like, I drove back two days in a row because they're yeah. like, hey, let's talk one more time. And okay. Then, like, when, when was this? This was, like, uh, First, early December? Second week okay. of January? Well, no, it was, it was early December. Okay, so yeah. right before Christmas, yeah. was it? Yeah, okay. okay. And then being in the new year, they head off to South Korea and they and leave we us just the like brand. handled it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you what the brand? They, they just left it for us. They're oh, like, they you guys it. run this. Like, <laughs> yeah. We've known you for a month, but <laughs> go for it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But we were, I mean, we, of course, were talking to Shane. Weekly, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And communicating in terms of like what that um, expectations were. And trying okay. To make sure yeah. That we got yeah. Line. That's kind of why it had yeah. to be so fast because they knew that they were leaving for South Korea like this. So they're like, okay. we got to kind of get the ball rolling on this. Um, but to answer, answer your question proven as a brand yes um, apparel online programming is kind of the business side Mm -hmm. of things so we have like what like 1800 athletes worldwide that we deal with over three different tracks so we have affiliate programming so like if your gym wanted to buy that they could get the programming that we write and that's kind of Dwight's baby that he writes for that oh yeah Um, oh cool and then for me is the compete track. So that's like if we have competitive athletes across the world individually, that's what they would follow. And then we also have a fitness track. And one of our coaches, um, Will, who lives in... He lives in Australia. He lives in Australia. Yeah, I couldn't a, remember where. But he's at CrossFit Torian. Torian. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he writes the fitness track. And the fitness track is kind of just like your everyday. Like if you only have an hour a day to train, like that's what you would do. So However, it's not watered down. No. Like, <laughs> okay. um, I will say like we were talking about this. It's like if I'm like traveling and doing a workout and I'm kind of like looking for something. And like I said, it's, an, it's supposed to be an hour a day. 
Um, it's hard though. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, yeah. Like a lot of people are like, Oh, fitness and compete. And you know, I've had some people that have, you know, reached out and be like, Oh, I think I'm enjoying the compete track. And I'm like looking at, you know, I'm like, I, you know, don't just don't okay. come right now. Like you're not there. <laughs> okay. Um, you know and the our, person and looking at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't do it. Um, <laughs> the fitness track is definitely like, you know, more than enough for a lot of yeah, people. Start yeah. there. Um, and actually I would start there cause it's, I mean, like I said, it's not watered down. Okay. There's a lot into it. And uh, if yeah. you're doing that, I will yeah. say another thing just that like kind of yeah. sets us apart is our programming is I, I'll put it against anyone's yeah. and like the breadth of how many programs we have, like the affiliate, the compete, the fitness, it covers everything. Mm. So like we have athletes, even like you said, yeah. they'll sign up for compete and they're like, Whoa, like uh, okay. <laughs> I, I don't have too much hours too a day. To, to, well, yeah, to, I mean, to he, he programs it, you know, in, in the expectation with not the individual setting, but the expectation that, this is what we do our to get athlete, the games. Like that's yeah. Our athletes, oh, oh, if they okay. didn't have us, they could follow this yes. program. The compete track, yeah. And, oh, and the end result of that could be going to going the games. To the games. Yes. Oh geez, yeah. This well, is not for your average. But people like so who, many. Who is, who is one of the competitors? Like main competitors that people know that was on the compete track, just constantly putting in his scores. Who is that? Like uh, from Australia, Con. Con Porter was yeah, on it. I don't know if okay. you know Con Porter. Yeah. He's been to the games yeah. forever. Okay, but like. Any games athlete could jump on this program, yeah. and they would, I see. would be a good program uh-huh. for them. Yeah. So that's that's why it's funny. Like people would just like, oh, I'm signing up for compete. We'll try this out first day. They're like, I got. Can you? We've, they, we've they'll had email that. us. Yeah, and we've like, had hey, that multiple times. <laughs> can you take my uh, my program back? I need to go on fitness. <laughs> <laughs> so proven is T and Shane, and yeah. they are well. Shane is coaching Tia, and well the other the other folks too. But so they have this company apparel all this programming and then other athletes move to town and then you guys are getting involved but at the end of the day these athletes like brooke and street and um alec and well like they are i mean at the end of the day they're responsible f- to get themselves ready for the games yeah. or, and they're they have a coach through you guys and they're kind of on an individual track it's just you guys are all here together kind of as a team well like, they're I'm all just trying really to yeah they're all the really proven. great friends okay um, which and is that's, like that's what's cool. It's like because, a family dynamic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's because not so much like proven as sponsoring this entire no, team. No, 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 yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. No. Got it. Got no, it. We got are it. the team and it's that, I mean, that was the thing when, you know, I, that bought me in a lot talking to, um, Shane and Tia from the Kiko, not to mention the fact that they're just the best of the best, mm-hmm. Yeah. but talking about like that family dynamic and really trying to create a culture that's around belief, um, in our athletes and really putting as much as we can in and then also believe in us, like, you know, what uh, Nick was saying about that trust factor. Um, and so that's where, like, I think the team dynamic, even when they're on individual tracks, um, allows them to constantly get better because they feel like they have a bunch of people in their corner. Yes. Even though they're athletes, they're competing against each other in terms of, like, when they want to go to the games and they're competitors. But at the same time, every single one of them want the other person to do really well and are excited about that. So. 100%. I mean, I see this as the model going forward. Do you yeah, guys? Because this seems pretty legit. The cool thing, that, and this is what drew me to both Tia and Shane initially from a business aspect, is that they set this up not to make money like they they truly wanted to offer something that they could help games athletes because they had been in that spot year after year after year like shane like yeah he's the best coach in the world there's no question about it and he has been but people don't know like because he's been in his zone like programming working he hasn't been doing any social media he hasn't been he doesn't really care about that yeah. Exactly. And yeah. every brand out there right now that offers programming, it's programming and business first. Like you'll see, that's all they care about because that's what drives revenue in. Yeah. And it, that's why it's been so cool and refreshing to see because he's like, all right, we need to set up a good product first as athletes and then the money will come. Like yes. as if you set up quality, then you're going to get that quantity. And that's what's been cool to see. And I think that's what drew us both yeah. um, to not only their personalities, but the business side as well, because now that they have the things in place to do that, business is going to blow up. So mm-hmm. it's cool to see. Yep. How did I'd like to hear from each of you. How did you guys get into the sport to begin with? Um, okay, well, so, I mean, I actually grew up as like a lifetime athlete, kind of being like the... I don't remember, you know, I've talked to a bunch of people where it's like, I don't remember not playing a sport growing up. You know, I was from the get go just doing every sport under the sun, which was like baseball, soccer, track, swimming. Um, I was in high school football um, and then did track and soccer in high school and then went to 
um, Berkeley and wound myself up on the uh, crew team. Yeah. Um, and then you guys I was, won a championship too. Is that we right? We did. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, when I was on the crew team, I mean, they'd won 14 national championships in a row. It was, <laughs> yeah, Jeez. it was, it was insane. Um, yeah, yours didn't matter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it, didn't, it didn't matter what I was. And, um, <laughs> And then, you know, and it's funny because it's cool. Like a lot of the guys that I ended up rowing with, you'll see them like they like I've seen a few of them go to the Olympics because like that was like how good the like Cal crew team was, wow. which has made sense why I was like always on second boat. Um, <laughs> I just wasn't tall enough. Those guys are 6'5", 220. Really? Yeah, I was I was small. Like so as a crossfitter, I looked huge. As wow. a rower, I looked small. Wow. Um, but then I went into triathlon um, for a really long time and I actually was, you know, doing that for a really long time. Um, and then... Um, kind of like moved to Boulder um, and was kind of wondering what to do when I'm really competitive. And it was, you know, CrossFit Sinitas uh, had like a $99 like try CrossFit type thing. And so... When you know, was this roughly? How it was long 2013. Ago? Oh, okay. So, right. and I, I literally was like the first member in the door at 6 a.m. on like the first day. And I was like walked in um, and Eric Rosa was there. And we worked out every single day at like 6 a.m. together um, from the get-go. And then... Um, I didn't know that he owned the gym until we moved from, and the place that we were in was a gymboree because they hadn't, because oh, Boulder, you mean a gymboree? like it's a little kid's like play center. So we had like carpet and like low ceilings. And so, yeah, we couldn't do any real lifting. So we were only doing body weight kettlebells and like dumbbells. <laughs> At CrossFit Sinitas? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I know. So, wow. yeah. O o OG CrossFit. OG crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> story. So like, and, and I remember the first day, you know, I was one of those people that was really worried about the money. So I was like, I don't know. And literally I did the first day, like, and I was on the floor and I was like, I was like, all right, I'm signing up. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, and it was at a gymboree and I was like, cool, I'm signing up because I like love this style of stuff. And then, uh, within like the next month, cause they had to get, um, in Boulder, Colorado, like trying to get permits for building is like one of the worst things that you'll ever try huh. to do. So it just took them longer. And then we had to move into the space that we're ultimately at now, okay. um, where it was like a little bit bigger. And so then, um, you know, as a member, I kind of like helped them move everything in oh, okay. and, um, kind of did that and then like kind of blew up from out there. And I just, you know, kind of fell in love with the fact that like, like I said, like I like learning things and I've played all the different sports and I felt like a really great athlete and it was actually kind of humbling to come into CrossFit and feel really horrible at mm. a bunch of things and I was like I just want to get better at those things mm -hmm. so um and I loved like you said like the camaraderie the community like a team dynamic within like an adult setting which is like what we lose yeah um, and so CrossFit to me just like kind of really bred that in me yeah and got me back to that feeling of like feeling like I had something to kind of strive for every single day and it was really fun and I I, I will say I miss and I mean we get it on the tracks of like people wanting to see stuff like really far in advance <laughs> I miss <laughs> the, uh, the looking at the workout the night before yeah. and being like I'm gonna do that tomorrow I want to try it you know like versus planning everything out like I kind of do miss uh, that OG style yeah. of just waking up and just going to the gym and not worrying about what it was and just trying to crush it Right. Yeah. See, I still don't look at workouts. When yeah. I walk into our gym, I go five days a week. I never know what I'm doing until I get there. And I like that. That's the way to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you said, and this is one thing I think that some people don't understand is CrossFit's not just another type of gym. It's no. a different sport. And totally. so like when you have someone who's talking about their gym and you're like, well, maybe you get into CrossFit or not. Like I had someone recently, a young man was, um, you know, he's looking for more community. And I was like, well, hey, here's an out of the box idea. Join a CrossFit gym. Because yeah. you probably find good community there. And he was like, hey, man, thanks. I'm part of a gym and have something good going. And I texted back. I was like, hey, just, you know, I, I get what you're saying, but this is different. This is not like just another gym. CrossFit as a sport is different from Planet Fitness entirely. Well, I mean, it's like how, <laughs> you know, how, so. how much of your, like, friends and relationships have come out of CrossFit? I mean, postgraduate, like yeah. out of college, everyone. Yeah. Like, I don't even know if I talk to anybody from college anymore. It's all CrossFit. No and kidding. Like, and like before that, like, so like kids I grew up with, like, yeah, I'm friends with them, but it's all CrossFit after that. Wow. My best friends, well, I have, a, I have, I have yeah, a bunch of people that have been example. married out of CrossFit gyms. Exactly. No, you know, happens. like it's like yeah. one of those things where it's, it's like, that's, yeah, it's, it's a little weird, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, How long were you head coach then at Sinitas? Um, I was head coach for, um, Technically, like six and a half years. Oh, okay. You've been head coach here for a while. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, so you don't way hear that a lot. Like, that's yeah. really cool. That says yeah. a lot about Dwight as well. Just like head coaches usually churn, <laughs> churn through like a lot. That's oh, cool. yeah. Yeah. Huh. And, and so Eric Rosa was into CrossFit way back when. Oh, man. I mean, he tried to buy CrossFit <laughs> seven years ago. 
I didn't. I didn't know that. Yeah, he really wanted. Uh, to, he's been wanting to do it for a really long time. No kidding. Yeah. So, okay. Is, yeah. He, he, still he have started that at um, MBS, which was it's. Um, it was Pat Burke's um, gym, and Pat Burke was like an original OG of CrossFit, and went, went to the games a bunch of times, like back in the day. Mm. Um, and so that he went there, and then he actually what, Pat is a super nice guy, and actually helped Eric start Sinitas, and it was literally down the road. It's five miles. Oh wow! Um, or like eight miles, and so it's to to be able to do that was kind of like a big thing because. Yeah. Um, so he actually helped him, and like that's where Eric started, and kind of like grew to like love CrossFit, um, and then he got Melissa, his wife at the time to join their team. And like, she basically did like, you know, started off in like a women's only type thing and then kind of like moved into like the main thing. And then they decided to start, uh, Sinitas that way. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of like how they started the gym and kind of like went off that way. And it was more of a passion project. Um, I think a lot, you know, in terms of the way that CrossFit's developed, a lot of people just have a passion for it and want it to mm -hmm. grow. So, yeah. And does Eric still own Sinitas as well? Yes. He okay. is. He is part of ownership. I would say it's more Melissa's baby. Sure. Um, and then Eric, you know, he still has oversight and has half the ownership, but it's really Melissa. I mean, Eric has a lot on his plate, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> For those that don't know, Eric bought yeah. CrossFit yeah, yeah, yeah. last year. Yeah. And is he, is he, he's functioning as CEO? Yeah. Okay. Um, how about you, Nick? How'd you get into the sport? Yes. I was, I think there's a two stages that Cross has yeah. been, been through. Like to Dwight's point, the whole dot com era was like the OGs. So like, 11 through 14 probably i would actually say 2008 actually well, yeah, yeah like it's really almost really yeah, yeah. Far 2008 back. through 2014 but i was like right at the end of like the like yeah OG and that was kind of just like the okay grab your kettlebell we're going on a run figure it out it like was, you're yeah, in it was hard you were stoked <laughs> you're like yeah. hey. and so i got in yeah. kind of in that second phase to where the games kind of fueled why people were going to the gym mm. so like espn was on like tia's on tv matt's on tv like that's what's driving people into gyms that's so like 2016 is when i started okay um so right after college i needed something like i played uh college baseball i tore my acl my senior year so like i knew nothing was going to happen there where are you at this point michigan okay. so i grew born and raised in michigan and i went to school there um and so i needed something and i was like all right this looks pretty cool on tv like i want to go to the games Mm. <laughs> reality check quickly there oh my God. <laughs> i can't tell you how many people are like they'll look at the sport they'll get into it and they're like i'm gonna go to the games the next year so I'm yeah like, do you know oh really but that's what like, it takes that's what the games mm -hmm. did for this like it, for it the helped community it. Oh, and that's what I, okay sure and that's what i mean that second phase of people like from like 2015 yeah. to now even like people think like oh i'm gonna be a <laughs> professional athlete because i couldn't be a professional athlete before i was like Hey, if you okay. weren't before, you're probably not going to be now, but, yeah. but Hey, if you want to give us our money, like that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but so like I got in and I was like, okay, I'm going to go train. I'm going to be a games athlete. That's what I'm going to do now. Cause I don't know what else I want to do. So, and coaching was never really a thought. I got a personal training certification, not even through CrossFit. So I was like making money that way, but I was like, I'm going to go. And I found a guy, um, James, one of my best friends now, like we were talking about friends through CrossFit. Um, it was one of my college teammates' cousins. So he just took me to a CrossFit gym. I got punished into the ground, obviously, yeah. like we all do. I was like, okay, I'm coming back. This is still in Michigan? Michigan, yeah. Okay. Um, so 2016, and then I started driving to him every day, hour and 15, one way. Cause I was like, I was committed. Like I was like, I want to be a games athlete. Was so, this the closest CrossFit gym? No, 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 no. I just, I yeah. like this guy. Like he was like, and he didn't like blow up my ego or anything, but I, he was a great coach. So I was like, I see a lot of value in this. Like, cause I came from college sports. Yeah. Like you want to find the best coach like mm -hmm. we do now. Um, so I was like, I'm going to just go train with this guy, see where this takes me. I don't really have too many commitments right now. So I was driving like three hours Dang. total to work out for one because I just went to a class. Like this guy, oh, wow. this guy wasn't going to let me just hang out in the back. I don't know how to snatch yet. Yeah. So like back and forth every day, hour 15, hour 15, like for a year and a half. Dang. Like, and that's you're on track to go to the games. That's exactly. what you're trying. That's what you're trying to do. <laughs> yeah, that's what, in my head. I'm like, you know, just keep putting in the hard work. Did he know like, that? Did he know you're trying? No, to No, I games? never really like said oh, it out okay. loud okay, to people. Gotcha. I wasn't because there are those people, like Dwight said. There's those people that come in day one. They're like, okay, I'm gonna go to the games. Just okay. tell me what I need to do. I was yeah. Like, well, Some people say that, and you're like, you look at them, you're like, you know, you're like. Maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every once in a while, you know, like, like maybe most in. of the time, you kind of like, I don't think that you really is that. Again, it's it's the top. 
you know, point zero zero percent or like yeah. that. <laughs> and it's the same way with every sport um, that you need to be at that top level. Yes. Was, you know, For most people, no it's difference. just like, hey, get in a time machine. Yeah. Tell your parents to get better genetics. And then, then yeah, you can exactly. Go yeah. But yeah, so quickly found out that wasn't going to happen. I mean, okay. I still trained hard, and but that's how I got into coaching. So okay. um, it's pretty funny. Do you know how like the level one system works a like with bit. coaching? Yep. Yeah. So I met a guy who was on staff, Andrew Charlesworth, and like he was a level three um, red shirt. That's what they call him. Um, and I got my L1 and L2 in a month of each other. Oh, shit. Mm. <laughs> and he's like... That's not usually what you do. No one mm. does that. Like I, he was like, don't tell anyone this. Like I think you're going to be a good coach. Um, so just go do this and then we can kind of fast track you because I yeah, wanted yeah, to be on yeah, staff. Yeah. Oh, like that was my goal. At that gym? No, no. So staff like at HQ has a seminar staff and what they do is they go across the world teaching the L1. Gotcha. So there's only third, there's, I think like less than 50 of them Yeah, now. and they do not hire that often. Like it's it's a very It's prestigious. very hard. To, you have yeah. to do a whole internship and then at the end of it, you have to pay for your own internship mm. and like go to all these different seminars. And at the end of it, they can just say, hey, it's not going to work. And that's what happens. I mean, usually. a lot of people actually, so it's pretty much just like, no. Like It's like the hardest know. job to get, but that's like, he's he saw some value in me. So he's like, okay, let's do this. And then you can get on a fast track for that. And I see. It, it was a great experience because that's how I got started coaching. Um, and shout out to Andrew. Like he really helped me in that way. Um, but then I got a job out in Iowa at OC three. And then like I was doing the yeah. same thing Dwight was doing, just head coaching out there. Um, and they kind of the same atmosphere. I mean, like they've had games team for years. It's a competitive gym. And that's how I got into the highly competitive coaching side of things. I see. Okay. Um, why do you think Dwight, why do you think I'm curious? I'll ask each of you this question. Why do you think uh, proven hired Nick? Like, what is it about you guys? <clears throat> same question for you, Nick, for Dwight. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Why, why? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of coaches that would love to be coaching for Proven right now with these world-class athletes. Why you did know, he get I mean, the job? Realistically, talking to Shane and Tia, um, it was a culture dynamic mm. um, that I think that like really brought. Um, they looked at people that had, um, for one, a lot of qualifications, had worked with uh, you know elite-level athletes, had the knowledge. I mean, we both had to put it in programming um, and write it out in terms of like what our thought process was as uh, sort of an application process. Yeah. So oh, like put okay. it in. I think and he like, got yeah. like, he got so many applications because yeah. oh, like he, all he did was put it, they put up a social media post. Yeah. They're like, Hey, saying they're hiring. Apply. Yeah. Yeah. Which good for them for reading all, all those <laughs> resumes that came in. But yeah, he said it was quite the process to get that going and then mm. narrow it down to, I think it was six of us six, that yeah, came okay. to Nashville seven, for think, actual yeah. in-person interviews. Okay. Yeah, and so, I mean, looking at um, Nick, I mean, that's one thing that's, like, I love about this team is, like, you learn from someone every single day. Um, and so I, I definitely think that, you know, Shane wanted different perspective, too, and he wanted people that have had, you know, different backgrounds that come from different places that can offer something, um, and then he can continue to, like, mold and develop through what he's learned because, like mm -hmm. we said, he's the best in the business. So I think what he wanted was people that, you know, are driven, um, that want excellence, that understand the value of really putting the athlete first. Um, and I definitely think that that's something that I see in Nick where it's like, I mean, the, the care is the athletes, not the coach. Yeah. And so that's really what it comes down to in terms of like what Shane and Tia are trying to develop here. And that makes perfect sense when hiring someone like Nick, where you watch him talk to the athletes, it's like all that matters mm -hmm. right there. And mm -hmm. then having that focus and that intention is realistically, I think what, um, kind of like brought, you know, um, Nick and I in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say it keeps Anything coming you want to add on Dwight, why he was hired? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think like we've talked about, like OG as OG gets over here. Like he's been coaching. Not many people have been coaching that long um, at a head coaching level, like I said, and that's impressive. Um, I think the more years – I, it's not always like this because I think in my situation, like it hasn't been years and years of coaching, but you can gain a lot of experience that way, um, especially when you are coming from a triathlon background, a marathon background, like he knows a ton um, aerobically, especially swimming, like big swimmer as well. Um, so he helps our athletes a lot on that aerobic oh, really? base capacity. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's been um, – because that's not something I – I told them in my interview, I was like, that's not a strength of mine. Like swim wise, I haven't been around that world much. Um, and I think that was a great thing in having another coach come in and be able to program those things. Mm -hmm. So it was good. Yeah. But I think to your point, like the ego thing just keeps coming up. Yeah. I got to assume 
that a lot of people that went through this interview process wanted it just because they could put their name on Tia and Shane. And sure. it, it's funny, but it's yeah. not right. Like, yeah. cause that's just how it works in business sometimes. Yeah. Like, Hey, let's springboard off them to get my name beyond what it is now. Yes. Um, and if you're a coaching someone, you just can't do it. Like mm-hmm. you're going to butt heads all day. And I think knowing T and Shane now, like I, tr- I would trust them to make that decision yeah. 10 times out of 10. And I would say they made the good choice, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but um, it's good to see that they put that first and they weren't mm-hmm. just, hey, this guy's coached a games athlete before for years. Let's just hire him. Maybe he's good. Like yeah. They really put their due diligence in to see how we were as people and coaches as well. Yep. Yeah. Do, you, do you think Nashville is going to be a long-term hub for Proven or is it just the city you happen to be training in this time around? It sounds like it. It feels like long-term yeah. hub. I mean, oh, yeah. I know – uh, you know, T and Shane were talking about it, you know, and right now, I mean, they're trying to find oh, housing did, and stuff, which they just on, got, uh, oh my God. Things on Proven change weekly, yeah. do they? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> which is great. Well, but it's like, basically a startup, right? I mean, yeah, you're going exactly. through yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, And so. I think that's one of those things. It's nice not having to have like a headquarters because we can do whatever we yeah. want. Like there's always going to be a gym that we can just hopefully totally. move and train into. Like as long yeah. as the owner's cool, like we're good to yeah. go. But it sounds like, T and Chain want to be here. They're looking for a long-term place to be here, and mm-hmm. obviously the athletes love it here. So mm-hmm. it's good. Yeah, I think because um, with the uh, the only thing that was like I think a hiccup for some of that was the um, Olympics. You know, mm-hmm. kind of in the bobsled yeah. because I know that you know T and Chain are going to be here through um, I think end of August. You know, and then yeah, they have to September go she goes yeah. till February I think for but bobsled. Then they're going to be back here and actually looking I think to buy. Yeah, then it'll be like okay. a permanent. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. right okay. now they're tr- the hard thing they're running to right now is trying to find a temporary like furnished home to where they only mm-hmm. are going to be there for six months. Okay, which, like there's so not a lot of people. Buy a bunch <laughs> yeah, of that's stuff tough to find. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, tough to find. I'm sure. Well, hopefully Nashville treats you guys well and you can find what you're looking for here and it serves you guys really well because i mean it'd be great for nashville if proven would just yeah, stay here 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so cool that yeah. you guys are in town and honestly. i mean nashville is just booming like it really it, is it's, it's what the fastest growing city in the well, country no, for right sure now? yeah like, but it's a good city too I, I, I like about i like the small town feel but the like the larger city like it's not a small town but it has that feel yeah. to it and uh, it, Nashville has a lot going for it. I, we, we really like it here. It became home for us super quick. We moved here in 2014. Okay. Um, but, um, you know, it's this is be good a city as any, I think, for proving to kind of, you know, ha- have as their headquarters and have as a good base. I mean, there's like a good airport here. There's enough of things around it. There's plenty of CrossFit going on here. Mm-hmm. So I think it's fantastic. You guys are in town. I'd love to hear you talk through the athletes. If you want to just kind of talk through the ones you're coaching, the yeah. ones you're coaching. Um Tell us maybe a little bit about kind of what you're working on with them in particular, or maybe some of their strengths or weaknesses that you're kind of working with as you prepare them for the game. I think that'd be great to hear. Yeah. So I'll start with Will. Do you know, do you know much about Will? Not a ton, a okay. little bit. I know he, you know, I know a little bit about how, what happened with his diagnosis and those okay. types you of things. Do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Will's had a kind of a rocky road as far as an athlete. Um, but Will, Will's a good dude. He, uh, I clicked with him really fast right away. You could tell he's just a really genuinely good guy um and i think he's been just kind of through the ringer over the years where it's hard to trust a lot of people and not even just as people but like with your training when you've been through something like that physically right uh and and will gave us trust right away so it was good like when we came in january when we first started it was just us like shane was gone they were in south korea Mm -hmm. so like we're like, hey man, it was just you two. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we were just coming and in. And Brooke like, and Will at that point on the weekends. Well, uh, no, they were they were all there by that. Oh, they time. were all there. Okay. Well, that's why. I mean, like like I said, that's why we both got hired because originally it was actually just kind of Brooke, I mm-hmm. think, you know. And then it was like they all kind of came in, and it was I think they all kind of basically moved here like December. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. we we came in just fresh start like January. Yep. It was okay. We all know each other, and at that point we hadn't had our individual athletes. Like that's no, pretty yeah. new. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So we were just doing it as a group. Yeah. So yep. we. We both got to know Will pretty well. Will is, he's one of the hardest workers that you'll find. Uh, and they all are, to yeah. be honest. Like everyone we have, I can't say that enough about him. Um, but Will's got a really great mind on him. Like he, he, from a coaching, he runs his own programming as well with his individual athletes. So he knows mentally like how programming should work. He knows how to kind of input things for himself and know when he should push and when he shouldn't and recovery wise as well like he knows exactly what his body needs so that's another thing like we want to give the athletes that respect to where 
you've been dealing with your body for your whole life. Mm -hmm. Like, you know how it should work. If there's something that's pushing against that, talk to us. Like our way isn't the highway every single time. Let's have an open dialogue. And I think that's another thing that coaches really mess up with athletes when they go to the games. They're like, this is my program. (laughs) You have to follow it. If you don't, you're not going to get where you want to go, even if that means you're going to get hurt in the process. Uh So we really give them some leeway and not leeway, but like communication to where we can compromise on some things. We can pull back, change their program program if we have to and that's what we've had to do with will because he is kind of dealing with some injuries right now and it's it's been hard to see because he wants to be there like Mm -hmm. he mentally he could go there and he could be one of the best in the world we just got to get him healthy Hmm. and when you say um his his athletes is he a a head coach at a gym somewhere he owned the gym before i don't know if it was trivium but he owned a gym in brentwood for a few years yeah and then he just full-time athlete after that because i mean I see. owning a gym is hard like it's a lot of work yeah he does do individual coaching but now yeah he has his own i don't even know <coughs> if it has a name or anything but like okay. he has like individual athletes that he programs and for. what year was it that he had to drop out of competition because that misdiagnosis i don't want man, it was a couple don't years quote ago. me on this but i think it was 16 that 17. sounds about right that's yeah. what i was gonna say okay yeah. so oh, he, he, 17 because he didn't 17. do yeah, the yeah, yeah. repeat like in seven that just came up last week okay. he didn't do the open that year and that Got was, it. And it basically it was a diagnosis that said you can't compete because that's going to be bad for your health. And so he didn't. Mm-hmm. As it turned out, that was I saw a couple wrong, more doctors, and, and yeah, they're like, and now he yeah. can compete again. Yeah. And so the injuries he's dealing with is not nothing not related, related to that. No, no, no. Okay, got it. And uh, man, that was one thing I was curious about is making sure that your athletes don't get injured leading up to the games has to be one of the top priorities, that's, right? Because I mean, it's, it's got to be tough to win the games. Like the, with the at the priority. end of the day, it, okay. it's the one, well, right? You like, got to get to the start line healthy. You never, yeah. you never want to talk about it but say matt sprains his ankle a week before the games he, it doesn't matter if you were the fittest man four times in a row yes you, if you can't compete you can't you don't just get a trophy yeah you know what i mean exactly like it's, you have to go 365 like there's going to be bumps in the road but once that game the games come you have to be ready to go yeah so you think will's going to be able to work through his injuries or is this still tbd yeah yeah he's going to be fine okay yeah i think he's going to be great um he like i said he's got a good head on his shoulders he's got a great home life to where he can really take care of himself and Mm. he's going to be just fine okay and you said you're also coaching brooke yeah so brooke has been kind of the number one um like dwight said she came with Shane just we thought that was going to be the only athlete and that's like when we got hired the position was for Brooks coach like that's that's what it was Mm. and um so we've learned a lot about her and she is also one that's kind of been through a rocky road in the past with coaching um I don't know if you know much about her past coaching experiences and we don't need to get into it but can you give us a high level just like she's been kind of put on the back burner in the past like Mm. we talked about before there's a lot of camps out there that are gonna not put their athletes personal preferences in front and they may give uh, preferential treatment to one athlete over the other Mm -hmm. um and it's just something that's been a bad experience for her because she is the best in the world. Like she's top, she's a top five games athlete and she could be the best in the world. Yeah. Um, she needs to be treated that way. And that's, I think what made her switch over to proven because Tia, Tia and Shane have dealt like Shane's done that for Tia. She wants the same thing. So I'm surprised to hear that she wouldn't be a priority because she just seems to have that natural thing whatever that is mm-hmm. yeah and it gets tough like if you're coaching a couple top five games athletes like yeah. they yeah, they all do you know yeah, what I mean? you're right like, good point yeah. yeah so it's it's been all about giving her what she needs and finally giving her that person in her corner to where she has full confidence and full trust that we are all about her so like all my focus will and brooke like that's how can we get them better today so that in five months they're on that podium at the games. Like that's yeah. all it is. We don't have any other issues with like outside noise. Like we're not trying to get anything else done for them. Like it's just CrossFit. It's, this is their career. We need to get the goals that they want to happen. Yeah. Um, and she finally feels that, which is great. And that's what we're trying to offer. Does she, she, how, she, 
she will lift weights and just have like a straight face. <laughs> like, does she ever like really grimace much? I mean, you'll see videos I mean, of her I, lifting I, I, heavy I've weights. Seen some pain. You just well, need I'm to, sure yeah, you've seen yeah, some you pain. Need to just but... come in to the <laughs> yeah. gym just for a training session. Like, you, li- you, you get to see it. She's really good yeah. at the face on camera. Like, okay. She, she, I'm Is sure that she, what yeah. she's holding the face for, the camera? Because, I mean, you see a lot of videos where her she's lifting. She's pretty stoic. Yeah, she's, she's very stoic. Extremely yeah, yeah, stoic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, okay, so, but there is pain that'll come through on that oh, face. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think hard. every games athlete to <laughs> oh, say they don't have a pain face, like, just come watch them in the middle of the week at, like, their second session or, like, we talked well, the about. The one who doesn't hide it is Street, for sure. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like, they always talk about Street's face. Like Street's the, like, I'm glad you guys weren't videoing me yesterday yeah, yeah. because I am ugly. When <laughs> okay. <I'm> <laughs> there, there's a couple of videos of him doing some stuff that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, but, like, to, to talk about Brooks' personality as an athlete, like, there's and I said it before, but there's no harder worker. Like oh, yeah. she, she's not as old into the game as people think. Like she yeah. started in 2015. She's 25. Yeah. Like she seems like she's kind of, she was of, a little younger than that actually. Well, she's no, 25? she's been in it since she was 17. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I think like people think just cause she's yeah. been to the game so many times that she's like a 10 year athlete. Like yeah. a lot mm-hmm. of these people, she's still going up, man. Yeah, like yeah. She's only going to get better. Mm-hmm. And she, She's got a lot of tools, and it's been fun to kind of look past the curtain on that as a coach to figure out, hey, you're this good right now, but I see huge areas that we can improve on, which is exciting. Okay. Like as okay. a coach, like you don't want an athlete that's yeah. perfect because what do you do? You just stand there, like, what can clap I do? them on right. and say, hey, yeah. great job. I don't know what to tell you. But yeah. like, she has some things from her past that I think coaches just let slide, which uh. – I don't know how um, at an athlete at that level, but um, we've been able to just tinker and change some things that very small to kind of the outside looking in, but they're going to add up to be huge in the long run Mm -hmm. to where if you're just fighting for those few points here or there at the games, like that's what bumps you up two, three spots to where you can be on that podium. Yeah. What are your thoughts on what happened? Was it 2018 when she stepped on that tape and got disqualified? Yes. Was it 18 or 19? Nine ish, nineteen because I mean, that was the yeah. last time the games has happened at Madison. So yeah. it was a nineteen, yes, yes, and yes. then things were just jacked up last year, and with everything, and so things are back on schedule this year. Yep. And, but so that was nineteen, and she was pretty fit that year. I yes. mean, right? She was yeah, positioned I mean, pretty well. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we didn't know her personally, yeah. Yeah. so like you can tell a lot in training camp, like what's going to happen for the year. So I don't know how things were going, but from what she says, she was fit. Like she was ready to go. Yeah. And then was doing this sprint mm-hmm. and ran back, stepped on the line. Yeah. And it was like, I don't know. What do you think? How wide do you think that tape line was? 20 feet, 15 feet ish. Yeah, it was a uh, man. Cause but at you the, were just all at the out. time I was there with, um, OC yeah. team. Okay. My, my fiance is on the team. Oh, wow. And, um, so they were doing the same exact event and there was an athlete that's a very high level athlete. Um, that's been around a long time that actually stepped on the tape as well. And they like, I don't think they called it at all. So it was like a, it was, it was a very judgment yeah. call. Ooh, that's even well, more that's, painful. That's, yeah. There's yeah that there's, those type of things that happen and they have happened at the game and that's judging right like yeah. you can't you got to just take it in stride it's like any professional sport there's like we watch be, that in the NFL there's going to be bad yeah. calls and that's why like we work on mindset so much with yep. these athletes like when adversity hits what are you going to do because it's going yes. to happen there's no there's not there's never going to be robots out there that are going to make perfect calls every time mm-hmm. there's never going to be like today like if you have to go train outside like and it's raining like this it's it's going to happen there's mm-hmm. going to be elements to where you're not going to be in a per- perfect position every time you compete how can we move on past that because yeah. a lot of athletes in crossfit they can't move past that mentally like it shuts them down they just quit the sport or they just won't come back again well, or just, they just bad competition just, like okay. once they get into a competition and something's not like their little gym in their corner with right. all of their equipment laid out and their schedule they just fall apart gotcha so like you'll see in the open yeah. guys just crush the open like they, they're in their own gym like in their little box like yeah. they're top five in the world and then they get to the games in person there's a judge there there's elements there's fans Fans and they can't even crack the top 20. Gotcha. And it's, it, it's not their skill level. Nothing changed in their kind of athlete they were, but it's all the intangibles to where, like, mentally you need to be checked in and you need to be able to handle anything that happens. That makes sense. Yeah. So when that happened, she was out for the games. 
mm-hmm. right? And she's yep. just, it's that just was over. the first year they did cuts. Yeah, they've okay. never done that before. So that was really interesting to see. And then at that point, I mean, you've been training all year for this and it's over and you got to think about the next season. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what else you do, right? Yeah. Like, is that how you move on? I mean, it's just, yeah. it's over. And then we start thinking about next year. Yeah, you, <laughs> you enjoy the couple of days you're there just because that's the only time you have all season yeah, to like just, enjoy life. But then you got to get back to the drawing board. It just seems like that would be a true test. I mean, that would, that would just be so hard. <sighs> Even, uh, I so mean, yeah, I to go remember. on that point street that year, oh my was God. a crazier story. You so, should tell Yeah. Cause he's yeah. Had, you've known street. For I've a known long street time. for a long, like yeah. he's an Iowa guy. So oh, okay. like, and my fiance's competed with him. So like we've known each other for a while as friends, like not even coaching wise. So, so it was cool when all this happened because, um, when I came into town, I just stayed with street, like for the interview, yeah. like street, oh, okay. <laughs> street didn't even know I was interviewing for this job job because i was like i don't want to tell him and then if i don't get the job look like an idiot (laughs) when you stayed with him he didn't even know no, no, no. what did you tell him you were in town for like i work for another company as well and like he's one of our sponsored athletes Mm -hmm. so i was like hey i'm gonna come into town like i'll take you to dinner like let's just have a good time (laughs) so so like (laughs) sunday sunday i show up and at brooke this is a good story because the Friday night we had went out for dinner and like, we just got some drinks and whatnot. And Brooke showed up and I just like, that's when I met her for the first time. Like I'd seen her at events, but like we hung out a little bit, we were talking street was there. And then I show up at the gym and I didn't tell her either, obviously. So I show up the gym next day and Brooke's like, what are you, what are you doing here? Like, Hey, and I was like, yeah, I'm here for an interview. <laughs> She's like, Oh really? Like, why, did, why didn't you tell me this yesterday? And then I texted street after and he lost it. And like, okay. it, it was a yeah. cool story. Yeah. yeah like, very cool. But, uh, to go back to what, 19, 19 it yeah. was. So street got really hurt in the open. Um, he was doing a max clean and jerk in one of the workouts and he dropped a bar on his leg. I can't remember if it was in training during that or what. It, it was the, it was the workout with the pistols and box jumps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was, so was he dropped a bar on his quad and separated his muscle, um, <sighs> basically like a really bad tear. Uh, and it, it, it lingered a little bit and I don't know, he said he was healthy going into the games, but I think he was still dealing with end yeah. street. Like you'll learn and Dwight may touch on this, yeah. like he'll run through a wall like for, for competition. Like he's the opposite of what we were talking about. He's a bear. Mm. Um, once he, once it's three, two, one go, like he's, there's no stopping him. Well, and sometimes that's where strategy needs to be. Exactly. About. And sure. it's, it's, a, it's a good yeah. and bad thing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. yeah. So he gets to the games and he didn't make it past the first workout. So there was that cut to where they had how many national champions? God, 250, dude, was, like, like 250 yeah, or something. I mean, the first, the start of that workout, there was, 250 people that like were or actually it was it was a huge it was like 50 person heat yeah like um and that's the one where after the first workout they cut the field and it was a 400 meter run um heavy squat snatches and legless rope climbs and do you think that was a miss i think that the way that they did the games was a miss yeah Uh, yeah. that the format was the problem um the workout is one of the best games workouts they've ever programmed like if that was just for like the middle of the weekend like top 20 great wad okay but to see (laughs) i don't want to bash it too bad but like to see guys out there that couldn't literally snatch that 185 bar one time was embarrassing like right. it was bad. Like you shouldn't yeah. be the games if you can't snatch one eight. And no one was in the okay. stands. It was like on a Thursday. No one wanted to be uh, there. Like mm-hmm. to like outside of the guy from Kenya's mom who came over with him to watch him. Right. Like, yes. No one really cared. <laughs> Are they um, changing that? Are we gonna be seeing more of that this year? We don't or know. have they okay. We never know. I mean okay. the national champions won't be there, yeah. but yeah. like there could be cuts still. Yes. We don't okay. we don't really know the format. Um, yep. because obviously the COVID with the games this year only had five athletes. So it was yeah different but also in 19 wasn't that the year that it was just so much chaos going on like the athletes didn't know what was kind of like what was coming down the pike they didn't know what to train for they didn't know what well, the they also, rules I mean, were gonna it was be like glassman you know it was like the whole like uh he got to pick people to come to the games that didn't it was qualify the, yeah the wild card thing the wild was, card thing was okay crazy. that was the year this was all it was just sort of chaos was, right? i think that there was no plan and I think they yeah. were doing it on the fly, and that's actually but like what it sounds to like. To your yeah. point, yeah. yes, this was the year that CrossFit had its first overhaul to where they got rid of regionals. Yeah. They, it was everything changed. Like, yes, this that, was the initial right. change. Yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, Street, like, to go back to that, Street, he got out in that first wad. He got cut because he just couldn't, like, it, it was his leg or whatever. Um, but you train for... 365 for this one event and you're out within 20 minutes of being there 
Uh, like it, it it's yeah, hard terrible. to even wrap your mind around and yeah. he at the time he was living in dubai like they brought him over to coach in dubai they were paying him a salary like to be a professional athlete because they that's yeah. what he was doing for a job so like there's even added stress from that he flew all the way over to america back to america to like do this for a job like these people paid for everything and that happens like talk about mental oh yeah like a, for sure well and to your point you get cut and then someone else continues on and then can't uh was it clean and jerk to 185 snatch no, no, no. squat snatch, snatch. yeah Just snatch there was, like, there was the some other workouts that came yeah. down the pike that you like saw people that did pass it and then it was and like, the yeah. hard thing is that's yeah. a great workout for street yeah like oh, really? even now yeah. like it's a great well, i never thought twice about it like, even as a friend back then i was like oh street he doesn't need to worry about this wad. He'll be totally fine. Yeah. Um, but running's his jam. He's yeah. good at rope climbs. Like, it wasn't that many leg lifts, and, no. like, the barbell wasn't an issue. Yeah. So you're primarily coach. You're going to be coaching Brooke and Will. Mm -hmm. And you're coaching Street, Street and, and Alec, Alec. Um, right here. And then, you know, starting that relationship now with James as he's kind of come on. Okay. He came on late um, to it. So right about now, right now I will say, yeah, like a month ago. And I will say, like, it's just – on that stage with um, James, it's more of kind of like an initial phase of like us starting to talk and like okay. communicate. Cause you know, like Nick said, we had, you know, athletes and I mean, it was just me and him um, developing the relationships with the athletes at the beginning. Yep. Um, and that's actually where like the relationships kind of came out and how um, Shane worked us into kind of like our jobs a little bit more so and who we were going to work with was just kind of like the natural progression of like, Hey, like this makes sense um, in terms of it. And it's kind of cool working with Alec and street, they're almost like completely opposite style athletes, um, which is kind of cool to like kind of get both sides, especially like aerobically speaking. Mm. Um, like Alec is one of the most powerful people that you can meet. Like his fast twitch fibers are insane. Like you watch him do a power clean and you're like, oh my God, like it happened in a second. Mm. Um, he's super fast twitch, one of the most high skilled gymnasts you'll ever see. Um, in it and one of the most humble people that you'll ever be around in terms of it. And I mean, that's, the, that's the one thing that like, with Alec is actually like him believing in himself that he's actually as good as he is. Oh really? Yeah. I would say that like, I mean, he's, he can be up there at the top, um, and you know, finding that, that real like fire and drive and killer instinct, mm -hmm. um, and knowing that he can win a lot of workouts, okay. um, is one of the things cause he has so much potential and you know, with him and it's kind of nice on that side is kind of talking to him daily about all the little things that we're trying to develop. Um, and that aerobic base is mm. something that's, you know, because he's so fast twitch has never been like developed in the past of like really honing in on developing that like aerobic system to be able to handle like the even faster wads. Um, and because you, you need that base in order to like go and have yeah, that, like, that killer instinct. So yep. that's kind of, um, working with Alex has been kind of fun, um, on that side of things and then seeing like all the stuff that, um, you know, when you put him into like, you know, yesterday's workout with the high school gymnastics workout, like that's his, that's his jam. Mm. Um, you know, and then street, like Nick was saying, like it's, it's, I don't think people, um, recognize like how good street can be. Um, he has amazing potential and just like an incredible, like killer instinct. And actually like to some extent doesn't even care about strategy sometimes. And that's mm. where like, I think. Well, I mean, w Nick was walking by yesterday and we were joking and it was like super funny because I was talking to him about strategy. He goes, well, yeah, if I was trying to be smart, I would do it that way. Uh, He's like, but I'm just going to go. Like, dude. Yeah. You're, and you're, that's a street thing. He you're just like goes. eight years into this sport. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Make an adjustment. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he's like, yeah. And then Nick just walks by and just laughs because you've known him for so long. And because like, you were talking about yeah, strategy yeah. and I'm like, well, I mean, I think that it would be done this way if we were trying. And he's like, well, yeah. And I, and. But that's also what's kind of nice about the way that this opens happened. Both with Alec and Street, actually, it's great to be able to take some of these workouts and actually kind of do some different things in terms of how you attack them mm -hmm. without the necessity of it being all important, mm -hmm. right? Because we, we have the next stage. So, you know, that's really what uh, we're trying to create as a training environment mm -hmm. um, on a daily basis that more than a competing environment. So truthfully, like with that, you know, I said, I was like, let's see where you're at. Like, it's to mm -hmm. totally okay yeah. if it doesn't go the best and you don't have the best time. Let's see, like, you know, he's like, I'm just going to go unbroken until I don't. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally, like, that was his thing. And I'm like, well, let's test it the out most, and then get, like, yeah. kind of, like, a number of, like, yeah. where we think are going to be a better approaches for this in the past. Like, but that's, like, kind of the, the great thing is he's willing to kind of go to that point of, like, failure, you know. And then on the other flip side, which was kind of cool, is, like, you know, we're talking to Alec yesterday and we're like, hey, just go. Okay. I don't care if you fail. I want him to go to failure. 
Gotcha. You know, like but that's he's like, not comfortable with that. But he's not yeah. comfortable with that. And that's yeah. like the difference. They're like literally opposite style athletes. Yeah. And they're both awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and then trying to like get a little bit more actually in like bringing them into more of alignment of kind of like where they're at. Because street is like, if you look at this guy endurance wise, his engine is top tier, like the best in the sport. Um, if you watch him on like some engine athletes, pure like machine workouts, mm-hmm. he can crush anybody. Oh yeah. 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 Is in, by the way, if he just goes out and just goes hard until he just can't anymore, that's just in practice, right? Like he wouldn't do that in a competition. No, no. In, in, a, in a competition, I mean, and that's the thing, like a little he, bit more strategy. The crazy thing with street is yeah. he's never had a coach. Yeah. Well, some of these guys, Ever. I've been hearing that some more. Well, like, Alex guys never had a coach, coach either. Yeah. Like, I mean, Alex said, yeah, he's never had it. And so, why is that? Why would, how, how would you get to the games and not have a legit coach? You're kind an amazing of, athlete. Yeah. Maybe. Like, is it? How You're just we an amazing talked a- about before kind of that separation of when, like, the games to the OGs. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of these guys started so long ago, they're like, I've been doing this. I don't need anyone else. Like, I don't want to, one, I don't want to pay anybody, right, yeah. to help me because I've done this so long. And Street's got a cool background because he started at CrossFit Kilo in Iowa where we were um, just as a college student. And him and his three buddies would train together every day. And you want to talk about running through a wall? Like, yeah. these guys just, they would train all day long. Like, that's all they would do. They would run these insane strength cycles. Like, they couldn't walk. Like, yeah. <laughs> the stories I've heard coming out of this gym. And the gym owner was, like, their age. So okay. he's like, all right, let's just do this. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever <laughs> survives is going to be really good. And these, yeah. And these are, the, like, we yeah. were talking about games athlete, like, potential games athlete. These were the guys that could do it. Like, they're, yeah, like, yeah. They, they, they walk in. They're, like, I want to go to the games. These were the guys yeah. who are, like, mm-hmm. okay, like, let's leave them. Let's see what happens. Because um, Luke Schaefer yeah. was another one of them, and he's been to the games as well. He's an amazing top 20 athlete. So they had a really cool group. Mm-hmm. And I think that's re- – on one end, it's a little scary because you never did have that coach, like, helping you with pacing, helping you with workout strategy. But on the other end, you had to learn everything on your own. And that forges like a lot of toughness in you as an athlete. And that's why street is the way he is. Makes sense. Is CrossFit a little bit like some of the mentality with, um, I follow formula one racing, like Ferrari and Mercedes and Mm -hmm. and all that. It's a pretty, pretty cool international sport that we got into a couple years ago. And the way they think about their car and their drivers is a lot of times like they'll be take McLaren, for example, they know they're not going to beat, uh, like last year, they knew they weren't going to meet Mercedes. Like they were, they were basically vying for like spot number three or four. Like they weren't trying to win the championship. I mean, they would have went for it, but they were really new. They were going to land like sometimes three or four or five. Like that was kind of where they were competing for. Is that the strategy with you guys, athletes, where it's like, well, we're going to go for it all for sure. But man, if we can get a top three finish, that's going to be really good. Or is it just, you're just going to go like, if you're not first, you're last, like. Yeah, I think it's a lot of them have intrinsic goals um, because like they want to be better than they were in the past. But with CrossFit, man, like programming wise, anybody can do anything. Yeah. I mean, T and and matter a little bit different because like no matter what comes out of the hopper programming wise, they're going to win. And that's what we've seen because that's what CrossFit tests is a test of fitness across all spectrums. But like when you're dealing with that spot two through 10, that can be anybody yeah. like depending on what workouts come out like it can shift like crazy mm-hmm. so we like anybody in our camp could yeah. do it like it's so you're training your athletes to win the games yeah. yes 100 that, that's what that's I mean, the goal for each of these five yes we're we're peaking them to whatever their potential is and yep. like all of them have potential i can guarantee you yeah. if you looked okay. into each one of their brains that's their goal yeah. like it may not totally. always be like a vocally like i'm going to win the games but like that's what they each and everyone want to do. It's not like like you were speaking about. I don't know much about Formula One, but like there's no barriers to where like okay, I'm going to be in the four through six. Like yeah. I'll just stay there. No, they should all. And that's where CrossFit's different because money plays a big part in that sport. Like Mercedes drops a ridiculous amount mm-hmm. more money yeah. than McLaren does, and so of course you know yeah, that yeah, has its advantages. Probably performance this standards. is a little different. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's the thing with the guys this year. That's yeah. crazy because Matt retired. Yeah, so yeah, like it's kind of left the door of, open. Is so it kind of like a free for all now? That's kind of what it feels like. The minute that post went up, well, I, I think told there's a bunch somebody, of people that decided to go individual and that came out of retirement. As as yeah, no, like the minute he put that post up, yeah. I just saw everyone's head just like, oh, oh, yeah, we're yeah, back yeah. on. Like, yeah, training yeah. okay, well, why, why? What makes what makes it seems like someone getting in and winning and then just going on a run, like Fraser, um, Froning. 
four mm-hmm. years in a row, yeah. right? Yeah. Frazier, five years in a row. Tia, four years in a row. Yeah. What is it about this sport where that it seems to be a co- like <sighs> common? I don't think we're gonna see it anymore. Yeah, I don't. Once I, these, they're freaks, man. Like Tia will keep doing it as long as she wants to do it, and she will keep winning. Um, but now on the guys' side, I don't think we're gonna see that. For I mean, Justin will do really yeah, yeah. well. Uh, I don't last name uh, Maderos. Maderos. Yes, um, the young guy. Yeah, you know, he's twenty-two. Noah's been great at the top for a long time. But where the sport is going now, I don't think for at least four or five years we're going to see somebody just ripping off championships yeah. anymore. Really? I think no. it's just like we got spoiled big time with Rich and then Matt back to back. Is this because of who's in the pipeline, or is this because of how they're changing the sport and the competition that we won't see that? No, I think it's just no. the athletes now. It's become so competitive on the guy side to where like it's. Going to be Everybody be, everybody's becoming way smarter about training. Like mm-hmm. you said, these camps are coming up, yeah. um, and these things are like new this year. That's the, and people are really realizing that it's the the programming and the training side of things and the mindset and learning how to do it better. Because like I mean, Rich back in the day, you know, he was like one of the first people to like really look fluid in yeah. every single movement. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of athletes they just grind it you know whereas he was like i'm gonna perfect every single movement so that's why he was good at the beginning rich was, yeah rich was way ahead of his time yeah and oh, that's yeah. why he won so many back to back like he, rich was doing in 2013 yeah. what people are doing now rich is a very smart individual um yeah. he 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 was kind of the pioneer i would say in the competitive landscape mm-hmm. um and that's why he, he has the success that he has now and not only as an athlete but business as well because yeah. he was mm-hmm. the first to do it um and then matt obviously was just kind of like the next version they don't train the same way but like genetically he was gifted to have yeah. that ability to win he was really smart about his training and recovery and that's what led him there mm-hmm. but like the the top one percent of the one percent of men now they're all starting to look the same yeah yeah they are (laughs) oh really yeah yeah yeah. and i mean you you look at the way that people attacked training back in the day when they were trying to be rich or they're trying to be matt you know like you said it was kind of like early and a lot of it was just like let's just throw things on a wall Let's just fucking go. The yeah. old, you know, like the yeah. old videos of Rich <laughs> yeah, are yeah. insane. Like yeah. they they trained so much, yeah. and so <laughs> reckless. Yeah, like the volume they were doing. You know, it, again, it was uh, it was kind of the, like what you said about CrossFit Kilo. It's it's kind of if you survive this training, you will be good. Yeah, but. A and lot of people get it, injured along the way. Yeah, True. And it's like that's why the genetics piece comes up so much. Yeah. People hate to hear it that it's not just hard work, but you have to be predisposed genetically to be able to handle that. Yeah, because yes. like I guarantee, Rich was trained with people that were doing the like it was probably Darren and Matt, like whoever it was, that they were doing the can, same yeah. exact program, but they weren't rich. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like they're mm-hmm. doing the same exact training protocols, but like Rich is the one winning all these championships. Yeah. Um, you were born to do something, right? Like even in any professional sport, you were born, whether you know it or not, to be that person. And that's what Rich and Matt are. Okay, that makes sense. And, and that t- same with thing. Tia, right? Like it, she's going to do that. Um, and then it'll be very interesting when she's done to see what happens because I think it's going to be all over the board with who wins. What makes Tia <laughs> so great? Because I remember years ago, I wasn't even really following the sport that much. I was doing CrossFit, but didn't know a lot about how the games worked and everything. I just remember seeing Tia on TV and she seemed... On TV, she seems a little smaller than some of the other ladies that were out there. Physically, but, you mean? Yeah, like just physically, okay. like she was not as tall and yeah. some of those things. And she was just crushing it. And I just remember, like this is years ago, and I remember seeing like that kind of like that, that look in her eye. Jeez. And just thinking like, I just remember kind of like being like, oh, kind of rooting for her. Like, you go, girl. Like she, she just seemed like she had something and then she just was winning. Like mm-hmm. what? She, Does she, she just have this? It's her just, mindset is for it, sure. Is Tia, it? Is that it, what it is? Yeah, Tia is She's an animal. Dense. Yeah, <laughs> like neither of us knew her before. I mean, did, watching you, her. Tra- well, yeah, we we just met her. She's like that was cool. the first time you met her, right? Yeah, like no, interview. cool, funny, like hilarious human being, and like super nice and sweet. Then you watch her train, and it's like you know you have that switch that like turns it's, on. It's a little it, scary. And it's just, the just first time in. I was oh, ever intense. in the yeah, gym yeah. with her, they got back from South Korea, and I dropped uh, dropped over at East Nashville just with Tia and Shane, and we just I, it was just working out with me too. I was in coaching, so yeah. Shane and I were working out with Tia, and Tia, I look over, and she's doing back squat sets at like what I would use. Like I'm a 220 pound man. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah it's intimidating. She, yeah, how heavy and, is Tia? 
she's one forty-five. I don't even maybe. know. She's, yeah, like, if that, like, she's uh, yeah. To your point, she is small. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, hopefully, she doesn't get mad at me for saying this, but like she was a small <laughs> yeah. athlete. Um, for the for the field, she's yeah, small, she is. but she's the strongest. Yeah, and it's Dang. because like you watch her train, and she goes to a dark place. Oh yeah, like when she trains, and yeah, it's, yeah. and that's what's like. I'll even say it. And you would probably say the same yeah. thing with Brooke. Like Brooke's realizing she's not here just because she just has some gifts and like she's gotten lucky. She, there's a reason she has the success she is because every single day when she walks through the door, that flip switches. Yep. And there's no more like we're not messing around. Like I'm training for July now. Yes. Like, even if it's September, everything I do today adds up for the bigger picture of my success. Yes. And that's what's raising the level of everyone's yep. performance. I'm on a the professional team. and I'm here to do yeah. a job. And I will say like, that's the thing coming around like Tia that, you know, was really cool to see and what separates. Cause it's not like, like you said, like these athletes aren't necessarily doing completely different programs to the point like, you know, with like rich back in the day, but like with Tia, you watch her and it's everything is everything. And each fine point matters. And she yes. cares about every aspect of training and tailoring it to like be perfect. And that's, I mean, that's what you see with champions is they yeah. do everything. And it well. all, it all comes down to trust. Like we yeah. talked about with Shane and yeah. Shane's built this from the very ground up with them. Like the, it's really cool to hear their story to where they just met like at a gym. Like there was no previous professional experience. Yep. Shane just kind of figured it out, became who he is self-made um, and he, there's a really cool story she told us yeah. last week about before she was going to the Olympics when she was a weightlifter. Um, Shane like changed something in her technique like right before in a train block. And she like obviously trusted him because they've been through so much <laughs> yeah. together. But then like two weeks out or something, like I don't even know what it was. Like right before she was supposed to compete, she's just missing lifts. Like the new technique wasn't really working. Things weren't happening. She was getting pretty frustrated. But like she trusted him and it got her to where she was. Yeah, like once wow. she showed up on competition day, it switched and she was good to go. And like that's a trust in him too for her to figure it out. And as that's well. yeah. the yeah, true. Exactly. Yeah, both yeah, ways. yeah. and he, that's why I think he, she yeah. was saying like he was freaking out. Like he's like, this may not have been a good idea. And now we got to go to the Olympics on the biggest stage in the yeah. world. It's, <laughs> watching Shane work that way too, because like you'll see him do things and you'll see him kind of like have that like little, but he still trusts in himself that he yeah. saw the right thing. Yes. And yeah. that's what we're creating here yeah. for all of the. The athletes to where they're buying in and even in the last two months like the changes we've seen for athletes that have been doing this for 10 years are astronomical and it's, mm -hmm. you, you don't see that at this point in people's careers what's well, also some of the benefits of what you guys are doing because i can't imagine how good this is for brooke to train alongside tia like to see her go to that dark place to see her put in that work yep. to see her locked yep. down like that that's i mean brooke's already doing that i'm sure to some degree but man that's that's got to have some wear off benefits for the guys, well, and the cool everyone. thing is, like you watch Tia, and I mean, she kind of you know coaches a little bit in there. She goes, oh, yeah. I've seen that in the videos too. Yeah. You can kind of tell, yeah. And she cares about each and every one of these people Seems that are like on the it. team, and isn't you know that's where the ego thing is. You know, she and, wants to yeah. do all, well, but she loves Brooke. And this is oh, another yeah. thing yeah. on Tia's end. Yeah, um, she I wouldn't say she's that naturally skilled at anything. Like she, she obviously has the ability to be the best in the world, but she's had to work for everything. And that's when you have to come from a place where you have to work and you weren't just given your abilities, you learn way more because you have to find all the avenues to where you can get that 1% here, 1% there in how you move, in how your brain works mentally, mm -hmm. um, and how you can kind of navigate your way through success without just being genetically gifted to do something. So like a lot. A lot of athletes I see, they just run on that for years and like, they're like, okay, I'm a top 15 games athlete, maybe a top 10 one year. That's good. Like, I feel good about that. But then once you want to be that top five, you got to dial in those tiny little one percenters. Yes. And that's what Tia is teaching people. What well, also, it also, I feel like just makes you a more humble person if you have to actually work for it as opposed to just having that, yeah. that gene pool given to you. But mm -hmm. also then even more important probably is that you can then help people better. Like if you're just exactly. great because you're just great genetically, how do you help people yeah. be great? Well, but if you had to learn it and go through it yourself, now you can actually have something to help people. And I think that's where more. Like to your point, yeah. that's where the competitive landscape is going now. Like you can't just be genetically gifted anymore. You have to, people are becoming so yeah. good at training and coaching is 
just rising to the top now. Like you have to have all the intangible things mentally, physically, mm-hmm. recovery wise. Cause if you're just genetically gifted, like you, you see it all the time. There's like NFL players that like try to jump in and like do CrossFit cause they think it's easy. Like just cause they were so gifted in one thing. You don't have a chance. Yeah. Yeah. You have to do <laughs> you everything. You need those years on your belt too. And like these yeah. athletes, like nutrition, recovery, every second of the day has to be at some point in the season has to be dialed in. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have time to go out on a Friday night. Like you, you're going to bed cause you have to get up in the morning and row for an hour. Yeah. It's a, it's hard. It's yep. very hard. People think it's a glamorous thing to do, but it's like it's brutal. You like some workouts, but the, the process is... And your rough. body yeah. just hurts, man. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. this is one of the sports to where you're a professional athlete that's very uncomfortable all year long. Like, yeah. I mean, you look at a lot of... Like, even the NBA, like, they deal with some injuries, but they have a long off season, and they're just... It's usually just a, a ankle, knee, yeah. joint I don't problem. know. I don't know if anybody feels 100% healthy ever. Ever. Yeah. yeah, that's what I suspected it would be. If yeah. they are, they're yeah. not doing well. Yeah. And <laughs> they they still get sore like other mere mortals. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> last <laughs> last week. I mean, it was, yeah. The yeah. only difference is they do the open workout and then do seven workouts, workouts after, after, and that's oh, why. Oh man, <laughs> and that's wow. why they're sore. Yeah, they're not sore from the open workout. They're sore from all the things that were. Around that's so it. crazy. Yeah. Um, what are you feeding them? Nutrition. What do you? What do you? So what? I right now I think you bro, know a lot about that. I know yeah, that. Yeah. So. Brooke is the only one following really a, a nutrition like protocol with a coach. Cause I'm doing that for her. Um, the rest of the guys, like we've talked about over the years, and that's one of the things nutrition wise, you don't really need a, a coach for, um, unless you have a specific goal in mind. Um, and I think a lot of them have known what they've been doing so long. Like, I think you would say yeah. that with your guys, they know where their body should be in tune to. Mm. I think once the games get close, we, we want we're going to really it dial it in. Like okay. over the course of the last three months, even with Brooke, like we're going to be a little more lax at the beginning of the year. And now we're starting to dial things in a little okay. bit more because once volume goes up in training, recovery needs to go up. And recovery means you're eating better food, you're eating more food, and then obviously the physical recovery as Mm -hmm. well. So we're really working on getting her um, to eat more, which in a lot of people's mind is counterintuitive because like you want to stay light for gymnastics, you want to do this, but so long in her career she was under eating, um, which is crazy at that level because she was at levels where like people that do a class should be eating like one, one hour a day. She was at levels of that. Um, and you're, you're talking about somebody working Whoa. out five hours, five hours a day. So like Whoa. in the last couple months, we've added f- like a lot of food into her diet. Her body like weight has stayed the same, which is exactly what we wanted. We monitor it daily. Um, and she's just recovering better, yeah. which mm. from a nutrition aspect, that's exactly what you want. You want to give people, the most amount of fuel that we will call calories or food that their body can handle without gaining weight as far as body fat goes, Mm -hmm. right? So like if we can give them 30 more percent maybe carbs because that's all we really use in CrossFit as a fuel source, um, they're going to be able to burn that faster and use that glycogen uptake to where they can recover on the back end from that. Mm-hmm. So over the course of a week, you're thinking of like a whole day's worth of food that she wasn't eating last week. Wow. Once we made lot. those changes. Yeah. Right. So like if we can recover more in January, February, March, keep adding food. And while she's burning more, it's only going to help her when the games come. Yes. Yeah, it's like what, more quality sessions there. Which exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What, Dwight, what are your, what are your boys eating? So, I mean, truthfully, like, like you said, we haven't really like honed in and dialed that in to the aspect. It's really quality is like the biggest thing that we're focused on and making sure that they eat enough. Um, okay. I will say like a lot of these athletes in the past haven't like focused on that. And like you said, they almost didn't think that they needed to eat that much more than everybody else. And it's actually mm-hmm. more, more just telling them to eat more um, mm-hmm. and more quality. Um, as opposed to just eating what's ever on the table and kind of as we go, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and keeping them filled through training, um, is more actually where we kind of start talking to things a little bit more so because they're actually pretty good, Mm -hmm. um, in terms of like eating the quality nutrition before and after training, but like making sure that they hone it in and like really hitting 
um, more carbs during workouts and making sure that they stay fueled and the protein because t- towards the end of the day, I mean, we've been at the gym 10 to 5, you know. <laughs> yeah. 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Yeah, and there's there's Dang. there's a training session at the end of the day. And if, if you see, you know, Street's a good example of this where actually I think he he naturally burns calories really fast um, for mm-hmm. one and I think can um, even eat more. Um, but you'll see like he crushes, you know, endurance workouts and randomly there will be an endurance workout at the end of the day that he like kind of, teeters out on and so it's more just kind of like hey like we need to make sure that in between sessions you're drinking you know 100 grams of carbs and 40 grams of protein right so that you're constantly fueled throughout so that you're not so um in such a deficit as you get later on in the day that you have that quality training because it's about each piece matters kind of like what i was saying with what tia is kind of like really like honed in on what these guys are honing in on as being professional athletes and so if you have one of those sessions not quality because you're not eating enough Mm -hmm. that carries over the next day and it's like how many quality Mm -hmm. sessions did we get in that week you're getting a little bit of a deficit Mm -hmm. okay that makes sense yeah are you training are you guys training from 10 to 5 today um yeah we'll probably be 10 right yeah. yeah um so so today for example street or any of them they got up what time you think um, they're eight, getting about eight. eight? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Get up around eight, eating as much as they can. No, or, no, no. Yeah, Cause you don't want to go into it feeling just a lot down. of, a lot yeah. of carbs in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and pancakes. Uh, if you eat too much fat, it's going to slow you down a little bit. So that's why yeah, you I don't know yeah. specifically yeah. on the guy's end, yeah. but okay. Brooke, Brooks, we, we work on a, and all professional CrossFitters should be working yeah. on a low fat diet. Yeah. As mm-hmm. many carbs as they can eat, because that's all we use for fuel mm-hmm. fat. Like during the off season, we'll introduce fat more because of hormonal issues, especially for women, because it keeps you healthy yeah. and mm-hmm. keeps you in the cycle that way. Will be some examples of fat that you would not have right now and introduce later. See that's like we, butter. No, it's yeah, like it's overall fat. Like in terms okay. of like a macro breakdown. Yeah, so we let uh, them, uh, we let them pick whatever they want yeah, as long it. as it's whole natural foods. Like okay. we're like go for it. Like okay. the type doesn't really matter. Mm. Um, but you got to be careful when you're on the low fat because like if you eat something like a whole avocado, you could you blow your whole day of fat. You know what I mean? So like we got to bring it back in a little bit where in the off season, yeah, eat it. That's fine. Like our mm-hmm. fat's going to be higher. It's healthy for you. But um, unfortunately, when you're training for the games, it's not always the healthiest option. Right. And that's like to any go p- high carb, low fat. Yeah. Just right. what they're doing to their bodies. Right. And Makes to be sense. able to get that back recovery wise, the carbs need to go up. Yeah. So like it's a give and take. Um, and I think like to your point. Yeah it's like a psychological thing that people went through for years in CrossFit. Like they wanted to look like the people on TV. Like you got six pack. Low carb. Like, yeah. You see Rich rolling around with like a eight pack all year long. Cause he's just, he's built to be that way. Yeah. And like, people are like, okay, if I want to be as good as him, I need to have an eight pack all year long. And that's where so many people from like 2014 to like 2018, they're like, all right, I'm not going to eat carbs. I'm going to try to get as skinny and like ripped as I can. So I can look good on camera, Instagram pictures, all that. Mm -hmm. And then they realize they're only hurting their recovery. And hormonally, they're, they can be messed up for a long Aesthetically, time. Aesthetically, yeah. you don't need to look a certain way to perform at your very best. Like yeah. body fat is not, percentage-wise, is not really that big of an indicator not, yeah. when it comes to performance. And people get that wrong a lot. But what are you guys doing? Because Alec and Street are pretty freaking jacked. Well, I mean, they're, they're that has nothing to do with us. They, <laughs> yeah, they are genetic <laughs> freaks. Is that what it is? But but also they are eating a lot of carbs. Yeah. I'm assuming if they're under so guys' program, and carbs, they still look great. So if your if your metabolism is at the one percent, which yeah. theirs is, okay, sure. you're gonna burn through. Well, like Alex put on ten pounds okay. of muscle, and that was ten in, pounds. Yeah, in, in what like time frame? Since, Jan- since January, since we started. Because he just wasn't, I think one aspect yeah. was he just wasn't training that hard. He wasn't. But yeah. he wasn't eating that much either. Yeah. So like with guys like Street and Alec, yeah. it's insane. Like if you give them a thousand more calories a day, they're only going to look better. Yeah. Because they're genetically. They're like, okay, cool. We're, <laughs> we're building more muscle now. Yeah. They don't put on the fat. I wish we could right. all be that way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but what the extra thousand calories a day, is it more rice? Like it sounds like it's more carbs, carbs yeah, right? Carbs. So your per- rice so would be, a, you know, a great source. As a okay. guideline, obviously don't take this yeah. for anyone listening. Um, <laughs> um, you should be at your protein level all year long. It should yeah. be the same. Like okay. your protein is going to stay the same. And then based on your performance needs, we're going to tinker with that fat and carbs. Okay. So if your volume of workouts go down 
then your fat's going to go up. If I your see. volume of workouts go up, your fat's going to go down. Carbs are going to go up. I see. That makes sense. And that's why for like someone that's going to an everyday CrossFit class, it's like they would want, you know, like the whole 40, 30, 30 thing is actually not a bad approach no. for people to kind of stick to. Mm-hmm. As you get higher up in the levels, it's like 50, you know, 25, 25, or like we kind of play with that. But like he said, it's like if you're, you know, if your days go up, it's like we just keep pushing up the carbs, mm-hmm. protein stays the same and fat goes down to keep the calorie in line. And that's like a pretty general approach that, you yeah, know, as for, a for optimal performance, you don't have to, like I just said, you don't have to have a certain body type. Like all yeah. three of us even are going to be different at our optimal levels. We're going to look way different, right? Because mm-hmm. of how we were just made as a person. So we need to find that level to where depending on how much we're working out, we need to eat at those levels that give us the, the ability to recover. Mm -hmm. So if I'm under eating, like I could even be gaining weight because my body is just starving and holding on to everything. And cortisol levels are through. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like stress comes into a big part of this because your body is just, if you are under eating constantly, kind of like we talked about with Brooke, you're not going to ever see any progress both in performance, but in body goals as well. Like how you look because your body is just shrunk and like it's holding on because that's how we were flight or flight. Right. Yep. So like we were built as human beings to be able to survive and we want to make sure they're thriving, not just surviving. Yep. So if we can give them that extra psychological push to where it's okay if you don't have a six pack right now, but yeah. look at your numbers on paper, you're getting better. Yep. And that's the goal. Like we talked about at the very beginning, if you're doing better this year than you were, who cares if you have one less ab? Yep. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it, like, that's it's, not the goal. Right. It's a very yeah. hard thing mentally because yeah. as a culture, that's all you see, like marketing wise. Like, is it really that hard of a thing for these athletes? Like well, if they're doing, I, if they're yeah. doing well, do they really care if they have that yeah. extra ab or not? Do they really? Oh yeah. Every, everybody wants to look good naked and think that they look their best. Yeah. You know, well, so I get like, that. I yeah. mean, it's one of the great things about I mean, CrossFit, that's, I guess, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's the thing. Like the minute you get into a workout, people want to rip their shirts off. Like when even every day, you probably see it when it gets warm outside. Like they do. Hold on. Well, I take my shirt off every single workout, 365 days a year, but it's not because I look good. I just, I want every little advantage I can. (laughs) So (laughs) So don't be knocking guys taking shirts off. Do you you ever wait for the perfect time in a workout to take off the shirt? Or do you just walk in the door and rip it off? No, I leave it on. (laughs) (laughs) I leave it on for the warm ups and the strength portion. But before we get into the workout of the day, every time I'm just taking it off. I don't want to fold it. Yeah, but there's those guys. Because I look good, they only do that because it's their abs. Like, and yeah, that's not, probably. I don't want to make a blanket statement for games athletes, but like, there's been a stigma for years yeah. to where I need to look that good because when I go to the games, all the media is on me, right? okay, and sure. I'm gonna like. There's, I need, a, there's a lot of attention. I can see that. that. And, and Instagram. I mean, it's you know, yeah. exactly. The hard thing for these athletes is the only marketing they're doing for themselves is social media, mm-hmm. mm. and like, I hate to say it, but like, that's what sells. Like on social media, like you're if there's a person with a six pack ab and they have their sure. shirt off, like somebody's gonna follow that over somebody that's sitting in the corner training with their bowl of rice just eating. <laughs> like no one, no, no like, one's what's, gonna, what's that guy eating over there? Yeah, like no one's gonna post their yeah. Tupperware tub of oatmeal that they're yeah. just sitting eating with a sweatshirt on. Like that doesn't sell on yeah. the internet. And these athletes, yeah. which is tough for CrossFit, and we're getting there professionally, the money's just not there. So they need to find avenues to where I can market myself for sponsors on social media and it's just a big cycle. I yeah, see. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I didn't I guess I'm sort of surprised to hear this aesthetic thing is this big of a deal and cross the high being, level. Being a nutrition coach for a few years now, yeah, like you probably that's, get a lot. Okay, more. you have you interacted it. with it more. Yeah, and even for like you said like members at your own gym, you see it every day. Like yeah. they can't they can't buy into the fact where I'm going to eat more, but I'm going to lose weight. Like it doesn't compute for a lot of people right? Yep. because even outside of CrossFit culture, like our world says, Hey, just starve yourself and you'll get skinny. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, and I've run a bunch of nutrition programs through, you know, the gym at Sinitas and I've, um, taken nutrition certifications and it's super funny. Like, like as an example, like what he was talking about, about people eating more and then losing weight. Um, you know, there's random times where you'll look at especially women, I would say like have a little bit more of like the eating more is like this detriment Mm -hmm. and you'll see them come in and they're like, Oh, I'm following my fitness pal of what it tells me. (laughs) And it's incredible what the like (laughs) recommendations are. And it's like, you're supposed to be eating 1380 calories a day and your basal metabolic rate says 14. And you're like, well, 
that's like if you're in a coma. Like yeah. You need to actually think about what you're doing in a day. Those are so the yep. nutritional needs of like a 12 year old girl. Yeah, right? it makes no <laughs> sense. And wow. And you so, know, and so I've you know been like, oh, we need to actually like looking at it. You need to be eating closer to you know 1900 to 2100 a day. And they're like, and no that way, scares no way, the it's crap out literally of literally. They're like, yeah. no way. And I was like, give me 30 days. And that. Like, as an example, there was one woman who lost 4% body fat from going from 1,300 calories a day no to 2,000. Is that because of what she was eating or is it because she no, was just able to work harder it's and then... your hormones. There's so some, everything, yeah. is, everything is regulated by metabolic hormones. So if you're not eating optimally, like what Nick was saying, your body's in a stressed state. If you're constantly stressed, uh -huh. so it is calories in, calories go out, but you burn more calories when your hormones are optimally performing yeah. and you can't optimally perform if you're not eating the right amount of calories. Yeah. That you makes know, sense. It's like stoking a fire a little bit. It's literally just fuel. Yeah. That's, like mm -hmm. I, it, it seems cliche every time yeah. you hear it, like fuel your performance, yeah. fuel, yeah. blah, blah, but that's all it is. That's what it like is. you can't drive a car without gas. You can't do a CrossFit workout without mm -hmm. carbs. That's the same thing. What are you guys doing? People for try all the time. <laughs> what are you guys doing for recovery during the week that you're working out? And then also on the off days. I'm sure there's so right sauna, now, ice bath. Yeah, there. right now their schedule yeah. set up to where they work out all day pretty much from Wednesday, Monday to Wednesday. Yeah. And then Thursday they do uh, an active recovery swim. So we've been talking about that, and it's not really active recovery. It's, no. a, wor it's a workout. It's another workout. But then, then they stay because um, right now we have a deal with Lifetime. Yeah, so Lifetime the, over. Yeah. It's in Franklin, I think. Yeah. Um, so they've let us come over there and use their facilities, and they're oh, great okay. people over there. Um, so there's sauna. There's um, hot tubs. And cold and they, pool. They, the cold pool, though, is not necessarily like it's, it's, it's an not, outdoor it's pool. It's an outdoor that's pool that like, has been cold, so they use that as their cold pool. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, which is is that cold. cold enough to do the job? Over the last yeah, few yeah, weeks, it it's been, actually yeah. been, but now it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. Like, okay. It's a, just a normal pool now. Okay. Yeah, when it's, I, I think for like a cold plunge, if you can get it down to like 54 degrees, like that's okay, like where it kind of starts that it is the benefit. Mm -hmm. You'll see some people that actually have like real ice baths that go down to like 40 degrees, and those are like, would be really helpful. But um, yeah, that, that your athletes trick. aren't doing that right now? No ice baths or I anything don't think like anybody, that? No. So like there's okay. a ton of different different information yeah, on different that. different theories on like, that. Mm. So we like to let them do whatever they're comfortable yeah. with okay. because recovery wise, that shouldn't have changed over how many years they've been doing it. Recovery mm -hmm. is going to be the same. So whatever works for you, keep doing it. Mm. Like Will has a sauna at his house, like an infrared okay. sauna. So he like, he knows that he helps knows that him. Yeah. Go do it as much as you can. Like okay. whenever you're not training, perfect. Apparently yeah. that was like a little bit of a process with his wife that it took a while for <laughs> uh, her to allow him to put that in there. Yeah. Oh really? Uh, yeah, but yeah. Why though? That's such saunas uh, are so great. I think it's just super expensive. It's, okay. Yeah, it's more of a money thing. She's yeah. like, I would like to pay buy for yeah, this. Yeah, and he was like, Yeah, sure. Okay, if you buy that, I get this. Yeah, <laughs> smart man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like you're seeing it now. All these athletes are starting to buy saunas at their house. Yeah. Like yeah. you talk, you, you listen to Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. Like he has one. He has everything in his house. He's mm -hmm. got a float tank, everything. Um, but so we go Monday through Wednesday hard. The swim on Thursday, Friday hard, Saturday hard, and Sunday is completely off. Okay. So Sundays are the days to where you kind of reset, just like everyone, you reset for the week. So you get all your cooking done, make sure all your meal prep is ready to go. Just kind of lay around, yeah. you know, like move a little bit, stretch a little bit to make sure your body's feeling good. But like you should do nothing on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Like there's, don't even go, like I know a lot, like yep. Brooke will just lay around like and she'll make sure she's ready mentally and physically for the week like yeah there's not a lot going on yeah yeah that's uh i've heard that from multiple of them like they will just stay very lie very low just mm -hmm. sit on the couch if they can sleep in you know just be super chill on that off day it's amazing how that rest that body just needs that yeah rest. that's all well, in the mind Exactly. Oh, okay. Like, sure. Like yeah. if you think about it, you can't grind every day mm -hmm. and have that full again. Everything matters, and so if you can't fully put yourself at present because you're just so ground into the ground, like you, mm, yeah. like you, you need, need a reset to reset yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 like for sure. you, I don't know if you listened to that podcast with Matt on yeah. Joe Rogan. Like yeah. he talked about those days when yes. he would just turn on Netflix and all of a sudden the day would be gone. Yep. Yeah. And it's needed. You at like that if you're going to be a professional yeah. athlete, you have to take those dates very seriously. Yes. Joe doesn't seem to be the biggest fan of CrossFit. Have you guys ever picked up on that? Yeah. He's, Why do you yeah. think that is? It's just, I, th I think it's a, for, for me, it's the kind of the same thing with a lot of people that aren't fans of CrossFit. They don't get it. Um, they haven't, 
they haven't spent time investing and understanding what like it can be in terms of how to do it well. Mm -hmm. Um, even on like, uh, you know, from the base up from a new person walking into a CrossFit gym to an elite level athlete that if you have correct coaches, um, and you have people that are really like considerate about how they put, put training on people, it's done well. Um, and being able to apply that and get people good at a GPP style program, um, it can be done really well and effectively and safely. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of people just don't understand that. Um, and I think that, you know, Joe's known a bunch of people that have been in it, but that have done it wrong. Yeah. Mm. And so he has that mindset that that's a problem, you know, and that's, that's kind of like what I felt about it. Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah. And to give Joe credit, yeah. he's kind of changed over the years. Cause I remember some of his early podcasts yeah. a couple of years ago where he would just laugh about CrossFit. Yeah, <laughs> He'd yeah, just yeah. be like, that's a joke. Like no one should be doing that. They're going to get hurt. And on the Matt podcast, he like genuinely, like he said, he's seen a change to where things are getting more regulated. And like you said, he kind of, um, compared it to jujitsu, jiu mm -hmm. like there's been this explosion across the country to where people are valuing what they're doing. They're valuing the results they're getting. So he's seen like it's taking a it's taking a turn to where mm -hmm. like the regulations are there. Yep. Um, more people are doing it the right way, and I think he's kind of getting on board a little bit more as well, a training protocol. And in order to excel, truthfully, like um, as a, a gym and um, as an affiliate, um, the thing is, is like there's so many people that got in. Um, for a long time that it was kind of like this, okay, yeah, whatever goes. Now the people that are doing well have to, like, that are doing well and making money are actually quality coaches and yeah. quality facilities. And that's the thing, like, you, it's with anything in the world. You're never going to talk about anything that's going great every day. All you hear about is the one bad story, and yeah. that's what gets on the news. That's what gets in, like, the rhabdo stories of people getting <laughs> hurt because the coaching is just negligent. Like that's yeah. all well, it people is. got in with level ones that have never coached athletes before in their lives. They just had done a couple of CrossFit workouts and were like, well, I could probably put these three things on a board and it's fine. But you don't think about how these things intertwine with each other. And then the next day, what that actually applies for what it was the just like feel. CrossFit yeah. came out and we all, I mean, I wasn't around, yeah. but like they had to figure it out on their own. They had a really good base model from Greg, but like there's going to be some bumps in the road with anything. Think about the first time that like the NBA or the NFL got started. <laughs> yeah. There was probably some bad stories from back yeah, in the day. For but, sure. But back then the media wasn't as big. Like there wasn't social media. You you just didn't yeah. hear about yeah, it. Yeah, that's a good point. So like with CrossFit, I think that you're going to start seeing over the years, like we got to just dig ourselves out of that hole to where we are like, not a laughing stock. We're actual professional organization. Well, I think that's accurate, but I also think we can put too much attention on digging ourselves out of the hole. I think the best thing CrossFit can do as a sport is just keep doing what it's doing because it's working. And yeah. I think some of that other stuff's going to fall by the wayside. I mean, I respect the hell out of Joe. I re I, I really do. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got yeah. he's got such. I just I just love him, and he's yeah. super smart. He plays like a dummy, but he's not. <laughs> he's super <laughs> no, smart. No, no. And, but on the CrossFit thing, I've just never look. Sometimes sometimes you're talking about stuff that you don't know everything about. I mean, he's got lots going on in his world, and I've just never given it really a second thought. I think he's wrong on that front. Yeah. I mean, I've been part of only three CrossFit gyms, and I haven't dropped in a ton, but I have some, and I've never had a bad coach, never a bad experience, That's never awesome. a bad workout, not once. Now, I've been injured. I mean, uh, it, it has happened, but you're going to get injured at anything that you do. And by the way, I would trade it. Like, I yeah, would yeah. take my injuries yep. in exchange for the fitness in the community that, that CrossFit yeah, delivers. Yeah. I'd rather and be so, able to do all the things that I can do. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. You get injured getting off the couch. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, uh, Every day in your life, if you're alive, you have the well, chance. Well, I had more in injuries as a triathlete than I've had as a CrossFitter. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah, running yeah. is rough. Well, I mean, if you think about it, like, oh, for sure, it's, it's the repetitive stresses. Like, yeah. plantar fasciitis I had for eight months. And just, you know, and I could, I, I literally, like, would tape my foot to train. Wow. Like, and I could hardly get out of bed and walk normally for, like, the first, like, hour. Huh. Yeah. As a triathlete. Oh, yeah. man. Pounding on the so, joints when you run is yeah. just Dude, like, oh, for sure. Oh. Like IT band syndrome. Like, you know, you have people that like have a, like a pelvic tilt and they wind up with lower back pain. And you just, yeah. Like, there's like a bunch of things that come up. Yeah. yeah. Speaking yeah. of Joe, do does CrossFit test for cannabis in the athletes? Hmm. <laughs> Don't you know? It's uh, it's on the list as being banned. Okay. Um, but it no also one wouldn't has, help you. But no one has ever okay. popped for it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, and CrossFit, they use, um, do you remember who it is? They Drug-free sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. CrossFit actually owns the right to come out with whatever results they want, which is a big problem. And they it has, come out with whatever results they want. They own the results yeah. to drug testing. 
So like it's not a separate company that's um what's what's the word? WADA. Yeah. So okay. WADA is a different organization that does the Olympics. So uh, like okay. they, so are, like a third party. they are a governing Yeah, that's what I was gonna okay. say. It's not a third party, it's actually they're a okay. governing organization to where no matter what, they are binded to give you the results of what they find. Like there's no politics involved. This is like, WADA. Third party. Yes, yeah, and that's yeah, what yeah. the Olympics use. Got it. Um, CrossFit does not have that. No. No, and if you want to go down the wormhole, you can kind of get into that a little bit okay. more. But like, um, I think, and this is totally my opinion, um, they just don't care about weed. You know okay. what I mean? Like, CrossFit does. There's okay. there's athletes that smoke, but like, okay. I just it doesn't help you at all. Performance enhancing, um, and it's becoming legal in so many states. It's, it's it would help you with recovery. Wouldn't well, it? did no? you know? I mean, you know, so the NFL just like they stopped caring about. Uh, marijuana. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, I'm no, not no. shocked to hear it. So it's 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 still so it's like the NFL has it. It's still banned. Okay, but they don't test for it. Okay, All so right. they just said they're just going to stop testing. That makes for sense. It. Well, so it's, it's just test. like it's so like Nashville. CrossFit. It's technically illegal yeah, here, but yeah. the the DA said they're not going to prosecute anyone with small amounts of pot. Yeah, so it's like yeah, and that's the thing. Basically like, legal. CrossFit could be doing the same thing, and I'll give it to CrossFit. Yeah. Like they've popped people every year for always like they, yeah. I don't think they're holding anything back it's yep. just they can like if they wanted to say hey we're just not going to test for marijuana we, yeah. like mm-hmm. that's fine like I don't think it's a big but deal we don't think it's something that's helping our athletes beat another athlete so maybe yeah. why why are we going really to really get be clear, yeah yes. not our athletes <laughs> no no <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. not helping like it's just not a big deal and yeah like, we'd tell them not to do it 100% yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I okay. don't get why athletes are even in, like the NFL players and the no, NBA no, no, players no. like especially if you're smoking you're an athlete stop smoking anything yeah like, I don't mm. care what it is hmm. yeah I could see that but there's some gains there with pain management yeah and some I actually of those yeah, things, I right? have no experience like from an athletic level with anybody that's ever used it yeah um, so I don't know I mean I you hear Joe talk about it all the time but I I don't know yeah I know it's big in like mixed martial arts and like the jiu-jitsu world I mean those guys will be they'll compete they'll compete high do they actually smoke all the time. oh yeah that's, yeah. that's insane yeah. yeah 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 they will a lot um, well, you guys got to get out of here. Thank you guys so much for your time. Yeah, this is yeah. truly a pleasure. Yeah, really enjoyed awesome. meeting you guys, and thanks for spending the time with us. So today, ten o'clock, your training. What's kind of on the docket the rest of the day? Just uh, everything. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> everything. In the so we uh, yeah. yeah, we'll go in at ten and do like a long aerobic piece because yeah. like Saturdays they're always so beat up. Um, so we'll just move. Like we'll get them kind of in that lower heart rate aerobic capacity for like an hour um take a lunch break and then we'll just hit it hard all afternoon yeah okay yeah. so the first session is more of kind of like a little bit of flesh out shake out and it's good okay, because sure. it gives them kind of a chance to just kind of come in and relax a little bit after the open workout and just kind of talk a little bit and not have to worry about okay we got to get this done we got to get keep going keep although going. sometimes yeah. that does lead to a long saturday for us because uh, they, they, they they take a long <laughs> time to start moving we're like oh, yeah. all right we've been here since 10 and well, it's five o'clock but we've only done like three things <laughs> Well, I mean, it's the funny thing. We're like, are we starting at 10 or are we starting at 11? <laughs> oh, okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll show up at 10. And that's the thing. Like, But we don't know if the workout starts until like 11 is, or not. Oh, okay. They, they need it. Like, yeah, mentally, yeah, no, it's just like, fine. You yeah. can't just be pushing on the gas. Like we talked yeah. about it. You yeah. can't be on the gas pedal all day. But like as coaches, we're like, we're just standing around. Like we need oh, okay. to do something. Are like, they, guys, are, the guys are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> are they there? Yes. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, there, yeah, but yeah. they're just We're hanging out. We're talking. Everybody gets there on time. But like the foam roller turns into like a nice comfortable couch on Saturday. I believe that. Like this is a little comfortable. I'm just going to stay here for an hour. Yeah, for sure. Hey, last question question for you guys before you go just a quick fitness or nutrition health and fitness tip for the listeners what would you say kind of to the average person out there not a pro athlete not training for anything in particular but trying to live a healthy lifestyle would be kind of a a a tip off the top um i mean my thing is and i think that um you know it's probably been talked about a lot on a lot of other health fitness podcasts but um sleep is actually probably one of the biggest things that people can really hone in on and actually fix um on a daily basis Um, and I think it's setting yourself on a schedule, um, and almost like having an alarm for, uh, your time to go to bed and to be in bed. Mm. And even if you don't feel like you're the person that can fall asleep that easily, taking a book to bed instead of watching TV or Netflix Mm -hmm. and kind of going on that because you can get down the wormhole and do that. And I think that if people got more on a regular sleep rhythm, um, I actually think that that helps your nutrition because your again, your hormones are going to be a little bit more in line. So you're going to eat better because you're not just starving because you're like have this weird sleep pattern that's going on. Yeah. That's going to lead to better workouts. And I think that like honing that in um, and really locking in what your sleep um, habits are um, is probably my biggest thing for like overall health for people. I love, do you know what? You just said something that I never heard of before, never thought of before and totally love it. Use the alarm 
in the evening to go to bed. Like just have it set on your. You're like you're looking Dude, at. You're like it's nine thirty. You're like. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm not doing anything productive. Yeah, if you can cut off your blue blue light yeah. from your eyes, like at a certain time at night, like your sleep and recovery go through the roof. I believe that because waking up to alarm, I've never, dude. I'm 36 years old. I hate it as much today as I did yeah, 15 yeah. years ago. Absolutely hate it. And right before time change, I was going to bed at like 9:30 and waking up without an alarm at like 5:45. You're like, perfect. I'm in a good rhythm. Yeah. It felt great. Time change messed me up. But my point was, I was just waking up without an alarm because yeah. I was going to bed on time. Yeah using like an alarm to go to sleep, but then get up whenever your body's ready, if you can kind of have that luxury. I like that. If you have the luxury, that would be awesome. Yeah, Yeah. those are really cool. Um, And they're making more apps like this now that I use. Um, I've used it in the past to where it wakes you up in a 30 minute window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you only it's like get gradually. You only get Does pulled it? out of your sleep <laughs> at your lightest REM cycle, and that's when you should wake up. I've used this. I think. What's it called? Do you I know? can't remember. remember okay. But like some people on watches, they have it. So like my Apple Watch is just like, you know, like this light alarm that goes yeah. beep, 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 mm, and it yeah, kind of like pulls one, you out. Yeah, it's supposed to simulate the sun coming up because oh, that's okay. how naturally our bodies are made to awake. Uh, b- become awake. Um, so, like, as the sun's coming up, you should slowly be pulled out of your REM. Yes. Where some people, like, it'll be like the loudest alarm clock ever in Dude. the middle of their deep sleep, and like they're screwed for the rest of the day. I, I know that's <laughs> how I am too. It makes me, yeah, for sure. And but the thing with that app that I was using anyway, this was a year or two ago. You, the phone had to be like under your pillow, I think. And I, oh, the one I, I, I used like was that. right next oh, to my bed, yeah, which yeah. was great. Yeah. Oh, it was, okay. Uh, it, the technology now is probably a little bit better. They even have like I was looking at your. Yeah. Is this like a Himalayan? Yeah, Himalayan salt. Yeah, lamp. I hear that's really great. Yeah, they have those that now that they simulate the sun as well. So where it glows Ooh, and that wakes you up. That's cool. I think Matt even talked about yeah, that yeah, on yeah. Joe. I think like, that's probably oh, the best way to that do that. Is yeah. Because cool. then your eyes get used to, instead of like having your shade, because you, like for us and all oh of our God, athletes, you turn on a light, <laughs> all yeah. of our athletes, they, they should have like all blacked out yeah. windows. Yes. Like you shouldn't have any light. Mm-hmm. So to simulate that sun, like that's what that does I love for that. them. Uh, Nick, you have a um, fitness tip, health and fitness tip. Mm, yeah, I would say for any athletes, whether you're trying to be competitive or not, just don't stop learning. Mm. Right. And like anything you can do, your gym's not doing it perfectly. Like I hate to burst anyone's bubble, but like you probably have a good coach, but like go find other people to learn from, Mm -hmm. whether it's in like a format like this with podcasts where you're listening to coaches or even athletes learn as much as you can recovery wise, mentally, physically, like just don't get complacent in your progress. Mm -hmm. And you don't even have to be like a competitive athlete. Unless you're just working out three times a week, you can always be better. Mm -hmm. And whether that's as a person, like father, husband, son, whatever it is, like just keep learning. Love it. Well, Nick and Dwight, thank you guys so much for being on the podcast. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Welcome to Nashville. Congratulations on your role with Proven. Yeah, and enjoy you. the season, man. Yeah, I mean, look, you. this is we're like gonna, uh, we're going to come back after we yeah. crush it at the games. Yes, you are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. you are, man. I, yeah, but best wishes on you guys this season. I hope you athletes yeah. stay healthy and can continue to train really well and do really well at the games. Yeah, I mean, we really appreciate you having us. Yeah, man. Awesome. I'm a fan of Proven, so thanks for being on, guys. Yeah, really thanks so much. Yeah.